Welcome to Fiction Narratives. Chapter 421, Hunting 2. Cute Little Lambs. Mugino's smile vanished, replaced by a cruel one. For Yuki to treat them as prey was a humiliation. Umph, who do you think you're dealing with, lab rat? Another energy laser shot out. Bam. Powerful beams shot out as Yuki distanced himself, gracefully dodging each one. She eeth. B-O-M-M. But no matter where Yuki stepped, a doll exploded. Come on. Who's the lamb now, the lab rat? Boom. Multiple laser beams struck the area. Meltdowner, as the name implies, is atomic destruction, her offensive power enough to keep her ranked as the fourth strongest. Yuki, using only the apocalypse virus and his physical strength, was enjoying himself in this battle. To finish it using Suzanu or the Breach Dojutsu would be boring, not to mention Zafkiel. Surely, these girls would be terrified. Expanding his smile, Yuki continued to dodge the energy lasers. TCH. Why are you laughing, lab rat? He he he, excuse me, but Meltdowner, if this is all you've got, I understand why Railgun is the third strongest now. You bastard. Needless to say, comparing her to Mikato struck a nerve. Veins bulged on Mugino's forehead, and the lasers became faster. If Mugino was holding back before, not trying to kill him but just to injure him due to the mission, at this moment, she no longer cared. She knew Octavo was fast, but she didn't believe he was faster than her meltdowner. Ha 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 ha. Die. Die. Of course, Yuki was reveling in this. His laughter grew louder as he danced through the air, evading the electron lasers. Mugino. You shouldn't. Frenda, at her side, panicked. Mugino was furious, being taunted by this lab rat. Frenda didn't want her to forget the mission's objective. Even if dead, we'll still complete the mission. For Mugino, even if Yuki dies, it wouldn't be a problem. Their clients paid to bring Octavo, never specifying whether alive or dead. This was a small oversight on their part. Kill me you say amusing things, Meltdowner. You can't even touch me, and you dream of killing me he he he. I'll wipe that stupid smile off your face, damn rat. Suddenly, Mugino pulled out a black silicon card. Seeing this, Frenda and Kuhinata widened their eyes in shock. Run. Damn it, at this moment, Frenda and Kuhinata wished they had another pair of legs to run faster. Even Takitsubo, who had been hiding, woke up from her dream and ran. Die, rat. Throwing the card into the air, an electron beam struck it, and this beam split into hundreds. Mugino was aware of her weakness, so she carried these cards to help shoot multiple beams. She eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
was it really worth kidnapping this pretty boy why not just invite him on a date surely, it would be safer. And who knows maybe they could get a boyfriend or something more. The only one confused was Takitsubo. She knew how horrific Mugino's attack was, so Octavo's ability had reached a completely different level. His genetic evolution had reached new heights, and the data they had been given was wrong. This is bad. We must abort the mission. This was no longer about completing the mission or not. Their target's power was beyond their capabilities, and at this moment, they needed to think of a way to escape. Mugino couldn't defeat him. You. Pointing at him with a trembling finger, Mugino swallowed hard and couldn't help but step back. Her best trump card had been defeated. Well, what now, Miss Shizuri? Yuki's eyes gleamed as he walked slowly. Meltdowners rays were powerful, but they wouldn't compare to those at the epic or low tectonic levels. For someone about to enter the destroyer scale, even if hit by Meltdowners ray, it wouldn't affect him much, at most a slight injury. There was a significant gap in their abilities that couldn't be filled just by shooting. Frenda. Understood. Mugino had lost her confidence, so she quickly called for backup. With Frenda igniting her ribbons, several dolls exploded as they retreated. Biri Biri. Suddenly, their nanomachine suits sparked. Terror filled their faces, Yuki had started using his viruses, and at this moment, their nanomachines were engaged in a microscopic battle against the apocalypse virus. They had been so surprised by his physical abilities that they momentarily forgot about Octavo's dreadful ability. Don't leave. I insist, please. Emerging from the smoke, Yuki pursued the group. As Yuki got closer, Mugino fired her meltdowner, but this time, Yuki didn't even dodge, his arm was simply covered in crystals, easily deflecting the attack. What a damn genetic mutation. As Yuki's ability evolved, it wouldn't be long until the first level 6 appeared. Boom. Ha 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 ha. Frenda's missiles and Mugino's rays made no effort to stop Yuki. Even the things Kuhinata sent flying with her ability were effortlessly repelled. We're so dead. I swear, if I escape this, I'll kill those guys who gave me the wrong information. Item having to escape was a great humiliation, but the group could only grit their teeth and express their hatred for the guys who hired them. Their team was useless, and Octavo's physical abilities were beyond what they were told. Ugh. Suddenly, Takitsubo let out a cry of pain and fell to the ground. Her nanomachine suit kept sparking, and her arm could be seen crystallizing at a visible speed. Takitsubo. Seeing this, a chill ran down the group's spines. This was the apocalypse virus, capable of wiping out all of humanity. What are you doing keep running? Do you want to die? Mugino didn't stop her steps. Being in this line of work always meant being backed into a corner. Death wasn't rare, so even though they lamented their companion's pain, they couldn't stay. This wasn't a joke. Chapter 422, Beautiful Legs Super sorry. Kuhinata bit her lips and kept running. Takitsubo gritted her teeth, attempting to stand, but a hand gripped her shoulder, sending shivers of terror through her body. Hee <laughs> hee, how cruel to leave you behind. But don't worry, little miss, soon they'll be with you. Hi. Yuki's hand roamed her body, tearing apart the nano machine suit, forcefully grabbing her chest. Simultaneously, he removed the gas mask, whispering words while nibbling on her ear. This was what he anticipated, the moment of hunting his prey. Yuki would ensure to relish it to the fullest, there was no greater pleasure than destroying the will of these women. How long had it been since he did something similar Yuki couldn't recall, but there was no doubt, this was going to be quite delicious. Please. No. Takitsubo was caught in a mix of pain and pleasure. The apocalypse virus was destroying her arm, yet it also sent waves of pleasure when its host, Yuki, touched her breasts. Don't worry, I'll make sure to enjoy you. When I'm done with you, you won't be able to live without me. Licking the sweat off Takitsubo's neck, Yuki smiled. As if these words were spoken by the devil himself, Takitsubo lost all resistance. Dash dash. Ha. 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 After running through several streets, the girls caught their breath. Fortunately, Yuki wasn't pursuing them after abandoning Takitsubo. Those super clients lied to us. 
Kuhinata was furious, this wasn't what they were told. The same frustration filled Frenda. Damn it! Why isn't it working? Mugino, on the other hand, tried to contact their sponsor for a rescue vehicle, but communications were disabled. This angered her. It won't work. My virus not only affects humans but machines too. So, I took the liberty of disabling their communications. Responding to Mugino's inquiry, a sinister voice emerged from the darkness, making the trio tremble reflexively. Walking step by step, Yuki emerged from the shadows, carrying an unconscious Takitsubo on his shoulder. Takitsubo's nanomachine suit was torn, exposing her skin. However, the trio didn't care, they could see visible crystals emerging from Takitsubo's body, along with her irregular breathing. Backing away step by step, Frenda tried to run. However, Yuki narrowed his eyes, causing her nanomachine suit to tear, and crystals started emerging from Frenda's legs, making her fall to the ground. Ah! Frenda screamed and cried, feeling your blood crystallize is a terrifying pain. Her face turned pale, and she started sweating. Now she understood why Takitsubo couldn't run anymore, this was too much for her. Please refrain from running, it's useless. Bastard. Mugino couldn't take it anymore. Instantly, four orbs formed around her and were shot, but Yuki didn't even flinch. He lowered Takitsubo from his shoulder and walked calmly, untouched by any of them. Mugino panicked, she quickly took out another silicon card, disregarding collateral damage and friendly fire, intending to unleash her full power. She refused to believe that Yuki could evade this again. You won't. However, before she could launch it, Yuki moved at high speed, turning his hand and mercilessly hitting Mugino's face. Her gas mask shattered, and her nanomachine suit sparked. G-U-H. Mugino felt an incredible impact on her cheek. Her vision spun, and she opened her eyes in shock. But that was all she could do, this single blow was enough to knock her out of the fight. Gulp. Seeing their leader fall from a simple slap, Kuhinata swallowed hard, also stepping back as Yuki looked at her coldly. You're the only one left, huh? With Frenda collapsing from excessive pain and Mugino was slapped, Kuhinata was the only one standing. Very very. With her nano machine suit sparking, the apocalypse virus had a hard time with this girl. After all, the most troublesome weren't the nano machines, it was the nitrogen armor. But this wasn't a problem for Yuki, he would make sure to pierce through her armor with power. Don't think you can just hit me. Seeing no escape, Kuhinata gritted her teeth and clenched her fists. In the end, everything was resolved through fists. Seeing this, Yuki couldn't help but smile, lifting his index finger, not forgetting to provoke her. Go ahead hit me with that little fist of yours. Don't underestimate me. Perhaps feeling offended for being called little, Kuhinata launched forward, hitting directly at Yuki's stomach. With a loud sound and the wind displacing, Kahinata's small fist covered with nitrogen armor was stopped by a hand covered in crystals. The nitrogen armor was powerful. If Yuki took a direct hit from that fist, it wouldn't kill him, but he would certainly feel pain. After all, it was similar to a punch from Tsunade, given its destructive nature. However, this was the best case scenario, Yuki possessed the most powerful body in this world, especially now that the apocalypse virus, due to his Sherinan, embarked on the path of genetic evolution. Seeing that her armor was useless, Kuhinata panicked, trying to punch with her other fist. Unfortunately, Yuki grabbed both of her hands and pressed her against the wall. I've said it before, but it's futile to resist. Let go now. Using her legs to attack, Kuhinata wouldn't give up. Unfortunately for her, Yuki pressed his body against hers, using his power to pierce through her nitrogen armor. Kuhinata was at the end of her wits, her armor was pierced, causing chaos in her mind. Grabbing both hands with one hand and lifting them in the air, Yuki used his other hand to destroy her nano machine suit, eagerly touching her thighs. What? Do you want to do? Stuttering, Kuhinata vehemently shook her head. Without her nitrogen armor, she felt exposed. Add to that being pressed against the wall, and a man touching her thighs was embarrassing and humiliating. You have beautiful legs. Smiling cruelly, Yuki raised his hand, removing Kahinata's gas mask. No. No. 
Super pervert. Super abuser. Super let me go now. Perhaps sensing imminent danger, Kuhinata trembled, shaking her head continuously. But Kahinata's screams were music to Yuki's ears. He grabbed her face with one hand and sealed her lips. MHN. Opening her eyes in shock, Kuhinata only saw her first kiss being stolen. Before she could comprehend, a tongue invaded her mouth, playing with hers. Everything was so confusing and sudden that Kahinata's resistance weakened. Pua. After a few minutes, their mouth separated, leaving a bridge of saliva between them. Kahinata's cheeks were flushed, and her eyes became glassy, looking at the charming guy in front of her. Being kissed was a comforting yet confusing feeling. If it weren't for the current situation, Kuhinata would probably enjoy it. Seeing her lost gaze, Yuki moved his face to her neck, gently kissing and licking some sweat off her. He didn't forget to whisper in her ear, just as he did with Taketsubo. You know, at this moment, you've been infected with my ability. You may have very few hours left, and I'm the only one who can help you. With her neck being kissed and these words, Kuhinata snapped back to reality. Her body started trembling, and tears filled her eyes. Hick. Please. Super let me go. I I was just following orders. I'm not the one treating you like a lab rat. But even if you were following orders, naughty girls must be punished. I'm not a super girl. Feeling offended for being treated like a girl, Kuhinata raised her voice, causing Yuki to roll his eyes. Kuhinata is a girl, whether she has a complex about it or not, that's not his problem. No, I never said you're a super girl. I said you're a girl. I'm not a super girl. Rolling his eyes, Yuki didn't continue this argument. He knew that when a woman has a complex about something, it's futile no matter what he says. Chapter 423, Enjoying the view infecting you was a mistake, and even if I let you go, you'll die if the virus spreads further in your body. Are you still willing to leave? Releasing her hands and ceasing to press against her body, Yuki snapped his fingers, crystallizing one of Kahinata's fingers. Feeling the sudden pain, Kuhinata looked at her finger, eyes widening. This was it, her fate was sealed. She had read about how terrifying this virus was. Everyone infected died without exception. She glanced at her teammates, Takitsubo's arm covered in crystals, Frenda's legs affected, even Mujino had crystals on her face. Item was finished. It was just a matter of time before they all perished. It was a mistake to try to kidnap Octavo. Seeing that Kuhinata made no attempt to escape, Yuki raised a finger, pointing at himself. I am the cure for this virus. If you're willing to offer something in exchange for your life, I can save you. I, I. Not knowing what to say, Kuhinata lifted her gaze. At this moment, Yuki resembled a demon. After all, Kuhinata was sure that what she possessed wasn't what attracted Yuki. Money the bank accounts of level 5s have plenty of zeros. Information it's possible, but Kuhinata instinctively rejected this, sensing it wasn't what this demon desired. So, was it her body what do you want from me, exactly? Dropping her shoulders, Kuhinata surrendered. It was all lost. The weak would be eliminated or turned into test subjects. That's how the dark side of Academy City operated. With a glint in his eyes, Yuki seized the opportunity, smiling sweetly. He took Takitsubo and Mujino in his arms, starting to walk. There's a nice hotel nearby. If you want to live, bring Miss Frenda with you and follow me. Lowering her head, Kuhinata knew what Yuki wanted. She trembled slightly and clenched her fists. But after a few seconds, she resigned. There was nothing she could do. She wanted to live, and this apocalypse virus caused horrible pain. Just hearing Frenda and Takitsubo's painful screams was enough. Moreover, at least my first time will be with the handsome super guy. Dropping her shoulders in defeat, Kuhinata found solace in this thought. She walked towards the unconscious Frenda, carried her on her back, and followed Yuki, sinking into the darkness of the night. Dash dash. MHN. On. In the darkness of a certain hotel night in Academy City, several moans from a girl could be heard. Clothes were scattered on the floor, and on the bed, two bodies tangled in sheets, engaged in a forbidden act. 
No please don't, super. MH. After reaching the hotel and renting a room, Yuki wasted no time. He tied up the unconscious Frenda, Takitsubo, and Mujino. While tearing apart what was left of Kahinata's nanomachine suit, he made sure to explore every inch of her body, bringing pleasure and lust to the girl beneath him. Yuki had given Kuhinata the option to back off, but she didn't. Retreating now meant death, so, she let Yuki push her body onto the bed, placing her in a missionary position, enjoying it. Kuhinata did her best not to moan and tightly closed her eyes. Her small, underdeveloped breasts were being sucked, and intense pleasure coursed through her body. MHN. AHH. Unfortunately, she couldn't keep her mouth shut. An invader suddenly found its way between her legs, causing her to moan in pain and pleasure. Oh. Simultaneously, as the invader entered, her lower region also experienced a leak. Her back arched, hands gripping the sheets tightly. Overstimulating her sensitive nerves made her climax with just penetration. However, Yuki wasn't going to stop there. He smiled and began thrusting harder and faster. MHN. AHH. AHN. Kahinata's immature body got lost in pleasure, while Yuki enjoyed her reactions. With each thrust, he could see sweat accumulating on her forehead, consumed by pleasure. Unfortunately, her breasts hadn't grown yet, so there was no bouncing motion, but that didn't stop Yuki from lowering his head and forcefully sucking on her underdeveloped mounds. No. AHN. Super, stop. Please. N. Suddenly, Kahinata's body began to tremble, and that strange indescribable sensation returned. Her eyes opened in fear. Yuki, on the other hand, released her breasts and gave her a passionate kiss before pushing harder and faster. You must endure, Miss Seiya. Remember, my fluids are the cure. Looking at each other, Kahinata's hands clutched Yuki's back. It was unclear if she heard Yuki's words or not as he continued his movements. A-H-H. Ah. After a few seconds, Kuhinata opened her mouth, desperately clinging to her partner. She could feel it a strange, warm liquid filling her insides. It felt so good that she couldn't help but bite his shoulder and twist her body in joy. Well done. After a few seconds, Yuki gave her one last kiss before pulling away. A strange liquid came out of her lower region as Kahinata's eyes slowly closed. The intense exercise had exhausted her, combined with waves of pleasure it was all too intense. Seeing this, Yuki assisted. Naked Kuhinata on the bed was sexy, not to mention that his seed was coming out of her. For some reason, this boosted his ego, and his smile widened as he turned his head to a lady who had awakened prematurely. So, did you enjoy the view, Miss Shizuri? Dash dash. Mujino felt the world spinning, her head ached, and she felt uncomfortable. Gah. Her eyelids trembled but refused to open. Her mind was confused, and she couldn't remember. MHN. AHH. AHN. Suddenly, strange moans reached her ears the sound of something hitting, irregular breathing, and spring squeaks. Mujino turned her head from side to side, trying to stop the noise. Unfortunately, the moans grew louder, making it impossible for the weak Mujino to keep her eyes closed. However, as her sleep faded and her vision cleared, Mujino remembered everything. She was knocked out by Octavo's blow. Ah, as her brain recovered, she felt a terrible pain in her face. Mujino didn't know why, but it hurt. Fortunately, the effects of the apocalypse virus stopped, only a part of her cheek crystallized, and the pain wasn't as extreme as Frenda and Takitsubo. Mujino tried to touch her face, but she couldn't. Her hands were tied behind her back. This made Mujino quickly analyze the situation. If she wasn't mistaken, she was a prisoner, but at the same time, it was confusing. The place she was in didn't resemble a prison or a torture chamber it was too elegant for that. No. A-H-N. Super, stop. Please. N. What? Suddenly, Mujino heard a familiar voice. She raised her head, and the source of the moans became apparent. Shockingly, Kuhinata was having sex in front of her, and worse, it was with the man who defeated them. Something was off. 
Mujino began to suspect that she might still be dreaming. After all, Kuhinata seemed quite happy, as if this wasn't forced. She clung to her partner's back and even opened her legs wider, as if wanting Yuki's weapon to penetrate even deeper. Mujino stayed silent. The atmosphere and the situation made her a bit nervous, and the couple finishing their obscene act didn't help. Chapter 427, Perverted Couple After a few minutes, Yuki dismounted from Frenda, leaving his mark on her body. His seed flowed from her loins, and the girl wore a satisfied expression. Yuki sighed, it had been quite enjoyable. Since Tsugumai left him eight months ago and returned to the world of the gods, Yuki had been restraining himself, especially with Yami living with him. Yuki couldn't be as shameless and go out to hunt women, especially when Yami had a quite sensitive sense of smell. Not wanting to make her sad, Yuki refrained from touching a woman during that time. However, he knew he couldn't continue like this. Fortunately, Item willingly offered themselves, and he could release his pent-up libido with these four girls. Who would have thought he'd strip the virginity of four girls on the same day even if the four girls were awake right now, they would probably think the same, sharing the same man and having sex in the same bed simultaneously. It was a tightly knit group of girls. It was a great night. With a smile on his face, Yuki felt satisfied. However, before he could close his eyes and sleep, small hands embraced him. Yuki blinked and looked down. It was Frenda, seemingly more resilient than the other girls. She didn't fall asleep and nestled her body against his. Jek Elskerdeg Jek Elskerdeg Jek Elskerdeg I love you, I love you, I love you. She hugged him, burying her face in his chest, murmuring in her native Norwegian. Blushing face, sweaty body, long golden hair spread on the bed, and hearts in her eyes, this girl seemed to have fallen in love, treating him like her boyfriend. Yuki wasn't sure if she was in love with him or just his manhood. To hell with it, I'll leave this to my future self. Sighing, Yuki also embraced Frenda, simultaneously hugging Kuhinata on his other side. With a flower in each arm, Yuki entered the world of dreams. Dash. The next morning, Yuki weakly opened his eyes, feeling strange. Chuyo. Chuyo. Ha. MMMMHH. The sound of suction was heard, and Yuki instinctively looked down at his loins, surprised by what he saw. A small golden figure was happily kissing and sucking on his manhood. Kajer dear. Feeling the movement, Frenda smiled and spoke in her native language. She stopped, hugged him and quickly gave him a kiss on the lips. Kajer are you awake? Showing her teeth, Frenda sat straddled on his stomach. Yuki blinked. Apparently, what he saw last night wasn't a dream. This girl really seemed to have fallen for him. Though it was expected, considering Frenda's interest in the opposite sex and Yuki fulfilling all her requirements, especially treating her quite roughly the previous night. Still, it was quite a surprise. What are you doing? Suddenly, Yuki shivered. This girl lifted her hips, using a hand to hold his manhood and guide it to her loins. Hoo hoo. Frenda responded with a mischievous smile before lowering her hips, letting Yuki penetrate her. Kajer Jek Elsker Deg, Jek Liker Deg, Jek Liker Deg S.A. God. Dear I love you, I like you, I like you so much. Ah. Oh. Without waiting for Yuki's response, Frenda desperately moved her hips. Yuki shuddered. This wasn't right. The roles were reversed, and Frenda was now using him to satisfy her desires. Don't play with me. Kaya a a a Kajer. Of course, Yuki wouldn't be passive. He lifted his body and proceeded to engage with this little pervert. She was barely a virgin yesterday, and today she was trying to compete with him. Unacceptable. His pride wouldn't allow it. Yuki easily subdued her, pushing inside. As expected, Frenda didn't resist, on the contrary, she cooperated, opening her legs wider and letting her primal desires take over. Perverts. What Yuki and Frenda didn't know was that Takitsubo, Kuhinata, and Mujino were awake due to their loud moans and intense bed movement. Dash. Kajer, open your mouth. Sitting in the hotel's dining room, Mujino was quite irritated seeing this couple in front of her. Frenda was feeding Yuki with a spoon and he had a bitter smile on his lips. After their indecent act with Frenda, 
Yuki discovered that the girls were awake. He took them all to the bathroom, they had done quite a workout the previous night, and the girls were a bit sticky down there. At first, the girls didn't want to enter, but after Yuki insisted, they had no choice but to bathe together. There was nothing to hide, the deal was closed last night, and it was too late to be shy. After that, they went down for breakfast, ending up in this little scene with Frenda clinging to her boyfriend. Mujino was really getting a headache. Kuhinata looked away, but the fork in her hand bent, showing her anger. Even the silent Taketsubo lowered her head, irritated. As much as they didn't want to admit it, this guy in front of them took their first time. Now seeing him flirt with a girl who wasn't them annoyed them, not to mention that his appearance was a delight for their eyes. But it wasn't Yuki's fault. Who would have thought that Frenda would fall so easily in love with him although Mujino suspected that the other girls were in the same position, it remained to be seen if they would show their clenched fists in jealousy. They were probably too shy to demonstrate it. Really, a group of masochistic girls. Frenda AA. Mujino couldn't take it anymore. She clenched her teeth, sending a death stare to her subordinate, who trembled in fear and hid behind Yuki. Well, enough of jokes, let's get down to business. With Yuki squinting his eyes, Mujino and the other girls had no choice but to suppress their complaints. I suppose you already know this, but from now on, you work for me. As your first task, I want you to send my regards to those white coats who see me as a lab rat. Mujino clicked her tongue and crossed her arms, she didn't like this. As a level 5 esper, the fourth strongest, she had to obey someone, but she knew this happened every day in the dark side of Academy City. If you're not strong, you'll be eliminated. Kuhinata also showed displeasure, and even Takitsubo wasn't okay with it. Yes. Leave it to me. Only Frenda was excited about it. She clung to his arm and smiled. Mujino really wanted to kill the subordinate of hers for stooping so low for a man. Come on, girls, don't look at me like that. We've been through a lot together. Besides, you won't do it for free. Only when the matter of money was mentioned, the girls couldn't help but let go of their sour expressions, even if they blushed at the hidden meaning of Yuki's words. They didn't have another option. How much are we talking about Mujino asked. I'll pay you double what your previous client did. Oh that's not a small amount, you know. It doesn't matter. I'll pay. Ignoring Mujino's suspicious look, Yuki held his coffee cup and continued. Besides, as my girls, I've already given each of you a little gift. Under Yuki's wolfish gaze, the girls couldn't help but shiver, even Kuhinata, who was about to object to being one of his girls. It's true they had spent the whole night together, but that didn't mean they belonged to him. However, for Yuki, this was set in stone, he had left something in their bodies that would make it impossible for them to live without him. What do you mean Mujino asked? Of course, whether she became part of a harem or not didn't matter to Mujino. She was more interested in the gift. I think some of you might have already noticed, but I'll say it just in case. Don't you feel different? Chapter 428, Evolution Perhaps due to Yuki's reminder, the girls began inspecting their bodies. Mujino had already noticed a difference upon waking up, her skin was smoother, hair shinier, and lips redder. She didn't need makeup to look good. However, Yuki, insisting that she bathe with him, playfully slapped her plump backside, leading Mujino to unleash a barrage of curses and temporarily forget the changes. Kuhinata experienced a similar situation, but the intense morning struggle in the bathtub made her overlook it. Even the usually quiet Taketsubo opened her eyes in shock when she witnessed the changes. Thanks, Kager. Frenda jumped into his arms joyfully, benefiting the most as her small breasts had grown a bit. Kuhinata couldn't ignore this, her eyes turned red at the sight. What superpower did you give us and why did Frenda's super breasts grow the most? Who knows? Winking, Yuki stuck out his tongue, teasing Kuhinata, who gritted her teeth. Both Kuhinata and Mikato harbored a complex about their small breasts, especially with Mujino and Taketsubo around. Kuhinata endured it because Frenda was as flat-chested as her, but now Frenda's bosom had grown, making Kuhinata the flattest in the group. Let me tell you a secret, girls. Biting his thumb, blood flowed, crystallizing instantly, 
and the wound closed. Gulp. The girls couldn't help but swallow nervously. The intense pain from the apocalypse virus was still fresh in their minds. My blood is a potent virus that can attack all living beings, including machines. It's akin to a massive biological weapon that could wipe out all life on the planet. Yuki wasn't joking. With his new power, the apocalyptic world Dojutsu, destroying the world was not a mere dream, but being a champion made it possible. But if my blood is the curse, my fluids are the cure, and more. For example, the genetic evolution of humans and even espers like you, enabling you to continue climbing the ladder towards the perfection of your abilities. Pointing at them, Yuki smiled as the girls gaped in shock. In the Guilty Crown world, unlike Adam and Eve, the virus couldn't evolve, bringing only doom to humanity. Now, with the apocalyptic world Dojutsu, Yuki only needed to infuse a bit of his chakra, and the virus would change its nature from destruction to evolution. Of course, the fluid part was a lie, he could do it with just a thought. Nevertheless, the girls believed it completely. And you girls are full of my fluids, both above and below, allowing you to experience changes. Licking his lips, Yuki recalled last night's activities and this morning's bath. The girls undoubtedly had it etched in their minds, blushing as they unconsciously brought their hands to their crotches and mouths. You. Mujino wanted to protest, but she couldn't. Satisfied with her changes, it was challenging to hate the guy in front of her. It was like playing a gotcha, she hated losing her money but loved the characters the gotcha gave her. She also understood that her client was seeking genetic evolution, and now they had experienced it. The irony. Of course, genetic evolution doesn't stop there. There are many more benefits. Even without esper powers, breaking human limits is not impossible. And who knows maybe your esper powers will improve or awaken. Remembering how fast Yuki moved last night and his super strength to withstand Kahinata's blow without harm excited item. But if you want to continue, you need more of my fluids. With these words, the previous excitement was replaced by teeth grinding and blushing cheeks. The girls understood. If you want to keep evolving, you need to work hard in bed with me. This was the hidden message in Yuki's words. I am a level zero, but I want to keep doing it. Only Frienda raised her hand, being the weakest in terms of ability. Frienda didn't want to be left behind, especially with how good it felt to have intercourse. She even thought it was a great deal. My boyfriend is handsome, a powerful esper, the sex is wonderful, and it makes me feel good. I can increase my physical ability, become even more beautiful, and maybe awaken an ability. With so many benefits, Frienda's eyes lit up. This was the best for slackers. Her companions looked at her with disdain, Frienda had no dignity, a dignity they would discard in the future for temptation. I'll leave you now, girls. I'm running late. Without saying anything more, Yuki got up, paid the bill, kissed Frienda on the lips, and smiled at the girls, who lowered their heads in embarrassment. Not all of them were as willing to accept it as Frienda. Goodbye, Kager. As expected, Frienda was the only one to bid him farewell. However, Yuki wasn't concerned, he had left something they would never forget, and he was sure they would come to him willingly soon, either for his love or seeking and craving his power. So, that's what's happening, ha 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 ha. After a few minutes, Mujino clenched her fist and left, causing confusion among her subordinates. What what's going on, Mujino? Mujino didn't respond, instead, her smile deepened as she began to reminisce. About a year ago, the fact that Railgun's ability had become stronger caused numerous problems, especially for scientists who had declared their limits. However, Mikato managed to exceed their expectations. This divided Academy City into two factions, those who believed in effort and hard work, and those who trusted tree diagrams calculations and human limits. This alone created chaos, as everyone was anxious to uncover the secret. Urgent studies on Railgun were needed, and the sister project was also affected. Yet, to this day, all scientists were silenced by a mysterious force, ensuring Railgun's life remained unaffected. Even a year later, the fact that Railgun had progressed was not scientifically discovered, but now, Mujino had no doubts. So, that brat Railgun slept with this guy a year ago, huh? Yuki's ability allowed espers to advance, 
and Mikato was Yuki's official girlfriend. So, it didn't surprise her that this couple had already eaten the forbidden fruit, and as a result, Mikato had advanced. And how many times did those two battle in the sheets Mujino didn't know, but Railgun must be a pro in the art of love by now. Ha 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 ha. With the secret uncovered, Mujino also left with her subordinates following. She could already see the moment when she would climb up the ranks of the most powerful. Alright. Let the party begin. At the same time, Yuki smiled, snapping his fingers, causing the apocalypse virus floating dormant in the air of Academy City to activate and start battling under underscore lines nano machines. He had already dealt with tree diagram, and this time, he would make those troublesome nano machines disappear. I hope this makes you take my warning seriously. No one knew to whom Yuki's words were directed, but he put both hands in his pockets and headed home. His gluttonous companion must be waiting for him. Biri, Biri. Several electrical sparks appeared in the air throughout Academy City, causing massive disturbances among the students. There were hundreds of billions of nano machines in the city, but Yuki wasn't worried. He had been releasing the apocalypse virus into the air, making it undetectable for those white coated scientists, so the nano machines remained inactive. But it was a different story for the man in the windowless building. All his screens went black one by one, displaying error messages. Under underscore line system was collapsing at a visible speed. Aleister briefly opened his eyes and closed them again, remaining calm even when his most extensive intelligence network was destroyed. Chapter 429, Necklace So, item failed, huh well, its evolution has progressed quite a bit, but it's still within expectations. With a hand on his chin, Jensei smiled as he watched the battle footage. He had secretly installed nano machine suits with cameras to gather data when item lost. For Jensei, there was never a chance for item to succeed. He had sent false data for this group to assume the mission, with the main purpose of testing 8's combat power, and the results were quite satisfying. As for item's fate, Jensei wasn't interested. They might already be dead, as 8th had destroyed the suit by cutting the connection. Good, very good. I think it's time to use that little one. 8th is too interesting, with a troublesome and profound ability. Jensei decided to introduce a certain girl to control him and the shackles that bind him. There's nothing absolute in the world, and 8th is no exception. Biri. Biri. Suddenly, the sound of electrical currents was heard, and the camera images began to glitch. Jensei slowly opened his eyes, slightly frowning. He he he, this place is no longer safe, well, it doesn't matter. I already have all the necessary data. Shaking his hand, Jensei walked calmly. He wasn't concerned about the disturbance in the city. Now that he had a fixed target and a way to catch it, nothing else mattered to Jensei as he disappeared slowly into the darkness. Dash dash. In Academy City, chaos ensued in the morning. Machines went haywire, causing disruptions not only in student housing but also in transportation. However, none of this affected Mikato. She prepared for a new day as summer vacation began, working on her assignments in the library to enjoy the rest of her break or so she intended. Miss Akasama. Miss Akasama. Various Ajusamas couldn't stop looking at her, their eyes filled with warmth and curiosity. With Yuki and her pictured on a date circulating, they all knew she had a boyfriend, a very handsome one, sparking curiosity about his identity. Unfortunately, none of the present Ajusamas had the courage to approach Mikato. Ah! Why did I come to this place? Mikato blushed, her pencil not ceasing its movement. Coming to the library was a terrible idea, but she had to for the information. However, the stairs made her increasingly anxious. She knew why they were looking despite wanting to say Yuki wasn't her boyfriend, she realized no one would believe her after the close encounter in their date and the facade they needed to maintain. Miss Akasan. Fortunately, someone came to her rescue. Kogusan. This voice belonged to a girl with a prominent forehead, flanked by two bangs of her long, well-kept black hair. Mitsuko Kongu, an Esper Level 4. Wane-san, a Watsuki-san. Hello. Miss Akasan. Good morning. Beside Mitsuko were two beautiful girls, Kinyaho Wane with short, wavy brown hair, 
and Maya Watsuki with long dark blue hair. They're supposed to be my juniors. But, seeing these three girls together, Mikato smiled with bitterness. All three possessed an impressive charm, but what made Mikato uncomfortable and jealous was that, being her juniors, Kinyaho and Maya had more feminine power than her. This realization depressed her, but she didn't let it show on her face, maintaining a twisted smile. What brings you girls to this place? It's for our assignments. Well, summer vacation just started, but we have to do our assignments. This school gives too many assignments. I know, right? Engaging in a pleasant conversation, the four girls laughed. However, Kongo's gaze was drawn to Mikato's neck where Thunder Soul hung. As a true Ajisama from a wealthy family, Kongu had a good eye for valuable items. With just one look, she could tell that Mikato's necklace was quite expensive. The rose-colored crystal materials emitted an indescribable charm, and Mikato herself seemed in sync with the necklace and thunder pendant, enhancing her beauty even more. Kongu had no doubts, this necklace was made especially for Mikato. Miss Akasan, that's a beautiful necklace. Where did you buy it? Kongu was very interested and wanted one for herself, preferably with her own emblem to enhance her beauty. It's very beautiful. Oh, incredible. Even Kinyaho and Maya were tempted. It was truly a beautiful necklace, every woman loves beautiful things, and they were no exception. Um. Mikato was in a dilemma. She had been so worried about the photos and rumors that she forgot to hide the necklace. Even Kuriko hadn't seen it, but now her friends already had. It wasn't bought, I'm sorry, but I can't say more. This necklace was a gift from Yuki, not something she bought. If Yuki wasn't lying, there wouldn't be another one like it in Academy City. Mikato didn't want to reveal this information, otherwise, with these curious Ajisamas, they wouldn't let her go. So, she hid the necklace with her hands and blushed. Oh. I see. But Mikato forgot a detail Ajisamas are very perceptive. This single sentence and her expression were enough for Kangu, Kinyaho, and Maya to understand. It's a gift x3. There was a pretty hot rumor in Tokiwada. Mikato now had a boyfriend, and if the girls weren't mistaken, this was a gift from him to Mikato. After all, Mikato looked at the necklace warmly, like a mother hen protecting it with both hands, not to mention they had never seen Mikato wear it before. This made the trio share looks and smile tenderly at Mikato. It's good to be in love x3. None of the three knew what it was like to be in love, but if their electric princess was, it must be pretty good. For a moment, they thought about getting a boyfriend. Miss Akasan. Suddenly, a very familiar voice was heard, and Mikato couldn't help but shudder. After all, this voice belonged to her worst enemy and the thorn in her side, Miss Aki Shokahau. Shokahau. What are you doing here? Era am I not allowed to enter the library? Responding with a smile, Miss Aki brought a hand to her lips. At the same time, she looked directly at the necklace hanging on Mikato's neck, an odd shiver passing through her body, unable to suppress the flame burning within her. Miss Aki-san what a beautiful necklace you have there. Smiling playfully, Miss Aki ignored the astonished looks of the trio of girls and squinted her starry eyes at the necklace. Can I touch it? No. Mikato didn't hesitate for a second to refuse, hiding her necklace inside her clothes. But Miss Aki didn't give up. She played with her hair's bangs, looking pitiful. Please, Miss Aki-san. With both hands behind her back and her feet playful, Miss Aki smiled kindly. Unlike before, her gaze was dark and cruel. Miss Aki wasn't playing anymore, and she definitely wouldn't accept a no for an answer. The collar on Mikato's neck was something that belonged to her in the past, and Misaki wouldn't give it up. Chapter 430, A Troublesome Girl More than 20% of the Scorpion members were arrested how did this happen? We don't know, boss. Out of nowhere, the leaders of District 7 and 6 started looting, and unfortunately, anti-skill was on the scene. After returning home and causing an electric spectacle throughout the city, Yuki once again wore his clown mask. The speed at which these criminals gathered under his leadership was astonishing. After beating a few gangsters, it became much easier for them to look at him with respect. Now he was preparing to engulf the entire city with his members, 
making Scorpion the sole rulers of the underworld. At the same time, putting pressure on those white coats of the level 6 shift project to stop once and for all. Underestimating over a thousand criminals, even a level 5 would struggle. Yuki promised Mikato that he would end this project with the least bloodshed possible. Mikato is too kind. Otherwise, if Yuki were in charge, he would kill these guys and destroy the city. However, now it depended on his gang of gangsters. Or at least, that was the plan. But it seemed someone was playing with his members yesterday, and they ended up being arrested by anti-skill. Not that Yuki cared about these idiots. However, these idiots were useful. Thanks to them, the eyes of the board of directors were on them. Besides, they were very good as walking wallets. Not to mention, they were the errand boys. One word, and they would move like bees. These were the benefits of being the leader of the criminals. That's why he had to go to the crime scene and confirm. Misaki, huh? With doubts in his mind, Yuki decided to check Raziel. He was a little worried if this was the work of Alistair or some other undesirable type that wouldn't want his group to become the new rulers of the underworld. And upon discovering the culprit, Yuki smiled bitterly under his mask. It seemed his stalker had made a move. With her power, it's not surprising. Misaki, as the strongest mental control esper, could easily control a few delinquents. What Yuki didn't know is why Misaki did it. Raziel wasn't powerful enough to read the thoughts and feelings of people. Misaki had played around with him quite a bit in the past, chasing him and causing trouble. That's why Yuki had a headache messing with her because he knew no matter what he did, he would burn for playing with her. Even Yami was unconsciously affected by her antics. This only made his gluttonous companion hate her to the bone. Just mentioning Misaki's name made her grit her teeth. Yuki didn't want to anger Yami. And as troublesome as she is, Yuki decided not to mess with this girl anymore. But Misaki didn't stop, she continued harassing him. And when Yuki couldn't take it anymore, he sneaked into her dorm room at night, smacking her plump behind as punishment for being a naughty girl. But Misaki was even bolder the next day, as if she really enjoyed her punishments. This made Yuki reassess Misaki. This girl was a complete masochist, really determined to do whatever it took to get his attention. Yuki was really beating a sponge, this girl was his nemesis. His tricks that worked on most people were easily evaded by this girl. Because of this, and to avoid more trouble, Yuki started ignoring her and keeping his distance. It's not that Yuki wasn't interested in her, but their relationship was becoming toxic. Yuki already had enough with Yuno and Mana. If he added her to his crystal palace, Yuki wouldn't be surprised if one of these days, the flames of anarchy burned in his family. Tn, Victor disapproves. But Misaki didn't let him escape. After all, this girl surprised him, as she was able to see his crown on her own. Yuki didn't know how she did it, but Misaki could instantly identify it if she managed to find him on the street. This was something even Iwas and Alistair couldn't do, even their clones had a hard time escaping her eyes. A girl truly to be feared. But even though she was troublesome, this girl had tact since she didn't meddle in his plans. Until now, of course, leaving Yuki wondering. Is it because of Mikato? He knew about the bad blood between Mikato and Misaki, and it wouldn't be surprising if Misaki were seeking revenge on him. But Misaki didn't know his face, and she didn't know his name either. Yesterday, he made sure to completely avoid her, even checking Raziel for her location when he picked up Mikato from her dorm room. She shouldn't be able to see him. Besides, there was no connection between Yuki and the Joker. Both operated differently, and Misaki wanted the Joker, so there shouldn't be any problems. Damn it. Shaking his head, Yuki didn't know how to deal with this girl. He wanted to punish her, but he didn't know how. Sexually harassing her would yield results opposite to what he expected. Scaring her didn't work since this girl would erase her memory and continue as always. Also, the Sharingan's Genjutsu didn't work on Misaki. He had tried before, and it only deepened her curiosity. And it's not like using brute force is the solution. Yuki wasn't the kind of person who liked to fix everything with absolute power. He prefers to play with his prey, torment them psychologically, exhaust them until they beg for mercy. Danzo and Hiruzen were good examples. 
Yuki spent four years tormenting them, playing with them, making them feel helpless. He even killed them in the most torturous way possible. Hiruzen died by the hand of his most beloved student, and Danzo died by an Uchiha, his worst enemy. Unfortunately, this didn't work on Misaki, and it's not like Yuki harbored any resentment toward her. She was just a girl too troublesome to mess with. After all, it was his fault that Misaki was stalking him. He was the reason this girl turned out this way, so Yuki couldn't and didn't want to harm her. Ahem. Misaki, I heard you had a bit of fun yesterday. With a chuckle, Yuki leaned against a wall, observing the figure of the curly-haired Tokiwada student. This brought a smirk to his face, he already knew how to make this girl angry. However, Misaki remained composed, tilting her head slightly as she met Yuki's gaze. Oh, Joker. What brings you here? Just passing by, thought I'd check on the aftermath of your little escapade. Escapade I'm not sure what you're talking about. Misaki feigned innocence, but Yuki wasn't buying it. Don't play dumb with me. I know you were behind the Scorpion members getting arrested. Misaki raised an eyebrow, a slight smirk forming on her lips. My, my. You catch on quickly, Joker. But why would you care about a bunch of delinquents? Yuki chuckled, twirling a flower between his fingers. Well, you see, those delinquents are under my command. It's inconvenient when someone interferes with my business. Misaki's eyes gleamed with curiosity, and her smile widened. Is that so I must have disrupted your grand plans? How troublesome. Yuki's grin remained, and he tossed the flower casually. Troublesome indeed. But here's a little piece of advice, Misaki. Don't mess with my subordinates unless you're prepared for the consequences. Misaki chuckled, her eyes narrowing slightly. Oh, I'm always prepared, Joker. Besides, it's all just a game, isn't it? Yuki's gaze intensified, his eyes narrowing behind the mask. It's a game until someone loses. Choose your moves carefully, Misaki. With that, Yuki sauntered away, leaving Misaki standing there with a contemplative expression. The tension between them lingered in the air, a subtle clash of unpredictable minds. Chapter 431, How do I catch him what do I want now wasn't I clear enough Misaka-san, I like your necklace. I already told you not to play with me. Why do you want it? Biri Biri. The electricity around Mikato didn't stop, and Misaki narrowed her eyes in doubt. Misaka-san. Could it be that you still don't know Misaka-san? Can't you see it? See what speak? Maybe it was Mikato's sincerity, but this response eased Misaki quite a bit. He he he. Misaka-san can't see it. A refreshing smile formed on her face, and she closed her beautiful starry eyes. However, Misaki could still see it, a small crown rotating around Mikato, protecting her. Misaki cared little about what kind of accessories Mikato wore or what happened in her life, but she definitely wouldn't overlook that crown, that eternal and comforting light guiding her path, a light she pursued fervently to this day. Misaki really wanted that necklace. As someone who had one some time ago, she knew what it meant to wear it. So, she was relieved to know that Mikato didn't understand its value, yet jealous that someone like her had it around her neck. At first, she thought that as the girl Yuki protects, Mikato might see the light, but it seems she overestimated Mikato. Misaka-san, if you really can't see it, then it doesn't matter. You. Mikato felt increasingly irritated, Misaki was playing with her. What is its name? Huh. The name of the necklace. The sudden question left Mikato a bit stunned, but seeing Misaki's eyes with the warm light, she decided to answer the question. Thunder Soul. What any comments? No it's really a fantastic name. With a hand to her lips, Misaki laughed. She then pressed the button on her controller, releasing everyone from her control before putting it in her bag. Huh. What's happening? Huh. It's Misaka-sama and Jokohuo-sama. The girls woke up bewildered, looking around in confusion until their gaze fell on Mikato and Misaki. Misaka-san, I heard that you have a boyfriend now. Don't change the subject. And what does this have to do with you? As Misaki didn't want to continue talking, she decided to change the topic, 
and of course, Mikado wasn't happy. Her face reddened, especially when the topic of her boyfriend came up again. Kongu and the other girls, now free from mental control, couldn't help but be interested. But I'm very curious. I heard he's a very handsome guy and also the 8th level 5. Putting a finger to her head, Misaki smiled and leaned in. The playful smile on her face continued. Misaki-san must share the secret with all of us. How do I catch him? Yes, we want to know too. Misaki-sama. But as if Misaki's words were a stimulus, the other Ajisamas couldn't help but comment, causing a chain reaction, everyone wanted to know. Mikato gritted her teeth, she really hated this woman. As always, being the target of everyone for years, Mikato was at her limit. You, Misaka-san, please don't get angry, we're just curious. Maybe because the joke went too far, the other Ajisama started to step back. However, Misaki didn't. She clapped as if a great idea had come to her mind. If Misaka-san doesn't want to tell us, that's fine. But, Misaka-san, maybe you can bring your boyfriend we want to meet him. We can't let any random guy be with our electric princess, right, girls? Yes. Queen is right, we need to know if he's suitable for Misaka-sama. Again using the support of the Ajisamas, Mikato was left dumbfounded. This woman was excellent at controlling people, even without using her ability. But this time, Mikato had the answer to this question. No. I'll never let someone like you meet him. Mikato didn't know if Misaki's mental control worked on Yuki, but she wasn't going to take the risk. Yuki is her friend and has many secrets in his head. This woman is too troublesome for Mikato to take her seriously, so she didn't hesitate and made a promise to herself. Over my dead body will I let this woman see him. Having said this, Mikato's anger disappeared. She looked around and silently left the library. She had nothing more to discuss with that woman. She also thought about warning Yuki not to approach Tokiwada, he needed to stay away, the farther, the better. UMM. Mikato's firm response left the Ajisamas wondering, they didn't know what to think. Apparently, they touched Mikato's reverse scale, but for Misaki, it was the opposite. We'll see about that, Misaka-san. Misaki's smile deepened. She had many tricks up her sleeve, knew Joker's true identity, and wasn't going to let him escape. At the same time, she would also mess with Mikato, two birds with one stone. Queen. This isn't good. Huh. Suddenly, one of her subordinates entered the library, quite nervous. She whispered to Misaki, who, upon hearing it, couldn't help but change her expression. Dash dash. Hokei's Junko, a third-year student at Tokiwada School, is quite beautiful with a slim body and a well-proportioned bust. Her long lavender hair is curly, and she has purple eyes. This girl is also a powerful level 4 esper, rampage dress. She can not only strengthen her body, making her stronger, faster, more agile, but also regenerate, turning her into a full-fledged superhuman. Her ability could even compete with the apocalypse virus, of course, in the early stages of evolution. Queen. Sighing lightly, Junko recalled Misaki's dark expression from yesterday. As a loyal follower of the Queen, Junko spent most of her time with Misaki. Everything was rosy until an incident caught Misaki's attention and her faction. Mikato Misaka, going on a date with her boyfriend. At first, Misaki only showed surprise. After all, it was astonishing for someone like Mikato to have a boyfriend, but that was the most Misaki could express. After all, she lost interest quite quickly. Until a certain photo was seen. If I hadn't shown it to her, if I hadn't shown it to her. Junko was quite regretful. She was calmly drinking tea until a post on social media appeared on her phone, a photo of Mikato holding hands with her boyfriend. As a good follower and someone who enjoys gossip, Junko showed it to Misaki. After seeing it, Misaki's expression changed from happiness to darkness. Misaki was angry, so angry that it was the first time for Junko to see her in such a state. Junko didn't have the chance to ask when Misaki left Tokiwada without saying a word. She tried to follow her, but Misaki used her power on her, preventing her from moving. Later, Misaki returned to Tokiwada, 
still angry. Unable to calm down, she unleashed her anger on the delinquents in the nearby area. She also controlled anti-skill agents, causing a small fight in the area, resulting in several arrests. Junko had a headache. She didn't know why Misaki acted this way, all because of a photo of Mikato. A pink one for the lady. Eek. Lost in her thoughts, Junko didn't realize when a clown approached her. Junko almost hit him for scaring her, but fortunately, she managed to control herself, avoiding bloodshed. Hmm Joker-sama. Half closing her eyes, Junko hesitated. As a loyal follower of Misaki, Junko was quite familiar with Joker. Part of the same experiment where Misaki and she met, the same place where Joker first appeared, Junko, like Misaki, had been chasing Joker, following orders from Misaki and her own will, although not with as much obsession as Misaki. But unlike Misaki, who could identify him instantly, Junko encountered many impersonators. With Joker becoming more and more famous in Academy City, it wasn't a surprise to see clowns wearing the same mask. Unfortunately, no one could make a good imitation of Joker, so they were easily discovered. Miss Hokkes, it's been a while. Making a bow like a gentleman, Yuki handed her the flower and put the hat back on his head. It's you, Joker-sama. Perhaps due to the clown's behavior, small tears gathered in Junko's eyes. It had been a long time since she last saw him, as well as the last time she heard his voice. Chapter 432, Dolly Clone Joker-sama, I've missed you so much. Wiping her tears, Junko smiled. The familiar clown figure hadn't changed at all, even after all these years, this clown remained the same. It's been a while. Indeed, time had passed. Seeing this curly-haired girl, Yuki sighed. He remembered it as if it were yesterday, although in reality, it had been a few years. Yuki couldn't help but feel nostalgic and somewhat helpless since, due to his mistake, Misaki ended up the way she was now. It all began at the start of the level 6 project. Yuki and Yami were hunting the sisters for the first time. However, there was a problem, even after going back a whole year, the first sister had already died. Dolly clone, the first sister. Dolly, known as the prototype and also as number zero, was a crucial figure in the project. She was the beginning and the only sister not connected to the Misaka network. Though Dolly wasn't part of the 20,001 sisters, Mikato's request was to save them all. Yuki had no choice but to travel back in time and save Dolly. Are you sure it's a good idea the future will change if you intervene? Master. At that moment, Est and Eggy had not yet entered their spiritual sleep, so they tried to stop him. Time travel is a terrible idea, Eggy even reminded Yuki of the consequences of changing the past, where things could get worse before getting better, such as his mother's death. It was a disaster. Dolly, being the origin of the entire Misaka network project, intervening in the past could create massive butterfly effects, rendering the project non-existent, and the sisters might never be born. If that happens, all their efforts will be in vain, and they might end up in a time loop. Yuki was well aware of the consequences but still hesitated. If Mikato finds out I left a sister behind, she'll surely be upset. Knowing Mikato's unstable mind and strong sense of justice, she wouldn't let a life pass, especially when she knows Yuki's time-traveling ability. She would plead until Yuki agrees to let her travel back in time and save her sister. Instead of letting a rookie handle it, I'm the best option for the job. The chances of Mikato causing a butterfly effect were higher than Yuki's. Besides, Yuki already had a plan and wasn't repeating the same mistake as last time. I suppose if it's that girl, it's possible. Eggy agreed as well, that's how Mikato was, after all. If there's an opportunity, she would do everything to succeed. Alright, let's. Tick, tack. With Zafkiel appearing behind him, Yuki materialized his spark gun. At the same time, Zafkiel's needles marked number 12. Wait. Let me try. Hmm. And just as Yuki was about to summon Raziel and search for the coordinates, Eki emerged from the spirit gate. This queen is very curious to know how it works. Let me try this time. Eki had seen Est use Raziel, and the last time they traveled to the past, her curiosity about Zafkiel only grew.
she was keen to know how it works and if it's possible to recreate its effects through her spiritual power. After all, time travel is very tempting. Fine, but make sure to mark the coordinates correctly. Shrugging, Yuki handed over his spark gun. Great. With stars in her eyes, Eggy wasted no time. She returned to the spiritual world and called Raziel, who flew over and opened its pages on its own accord. Yuki could only sigh at all of this, his poor angels became freeloaders, with the demon king controlling most of their spiritual world. They had no choice but to take refuge in Est's house, paying rent in the form of Est frequently using Raziel. His two poor angels couldn't resist, it was either this or challenge the demon king again. Yuki could only wish them good luck, they were his weapons, but in the end, they were still other tenants in his spiritual world. And he couldn't say anything to Est, after all, unlike these two lazy angels who did nothing for so many years, Est built her house herself, even constructing furniture and all sorts of basic utensils. Very different from Zafkiel and Raziel, who only slept on the cold floor in their spiritual world. In a way, Est was quite generous in letting these two slackers in and providing them with a room. Only Eggy earned her place, as she expanded the size of the house and built a few cultivation rooms. Ready. With the coordinates marked, Eki raised the spark gun ready to fire. Yuki assisted and waited until something flashed in his mind. Wait, did you forget to mark the location, right? Zafkiel, you'd bet. Unfortunately, Yuki's warning came too late, Eki had already pulled the trigger, engulfing Yuki in darkness. Dash dash. Research Talent Workshop, Dolly Clone, Academy City, Third Laboratory, Ideal. Your ability is developing rapidly, soon exterior will be complete. Even though it's something I don't need. Closing one of her beautiful starry eyes, Misaki, about 11 or 12 years old, appeared physically similar to her future self. Unlike the future, where her figure was well proportioned, her current body was quite childish, and her chest was as flat as a runway. Please don't say that, exterior is quite beneficial for both you and us. Responding to Misaki's uncomfortable comment, a woman in a white lab coat with an anti-mind control device on her head smiled bitterly. Project Exterior is a giant brain, cultivated through Misaki's cerebral cortex. Exterior is not only a large brain that significantly boosts Misaki's ability but is also built with the purpose of allowing anyone, whether an esper or ordinary person, to use mental out. Of course, this is just the surface of all the uses that can be accomplished with a giant brain. Can I go home now? As the ability test had ended, Misaki no longer wanted to stay in this laboratory. However, the woman shook her head. No, I have to introduce you to someone. Hmm. Tilting her head in confusion, Misaki had no choice but to follow the woman. Let me introduce you, she is our prototype, and we call her Dolly. After a few minutes, they reached an isolated room where a short-haired girl with tea-colored hair was inside. The girl had a physical appearance similar to Misaki, making her age easily confused. She held a large glass jar with an unknown substance inside. Dolly glanced at Misaki for a moment before turning her head away, showing no interest in the girl in front of her. Prototype Misaki squinted and looked directly at the girl. This girl in front of her was not normal, she seemed quite weak, and her eyes lacked any spark, as if she were suffering from an illness. Come on. What did I tell you about greeting? Slightly annoyed by the lack of courtesy, the woman tugged at Misaki's medical gown, revealing deep scars. No. Don't look at me. Dolly, feeling Misaki's gaze on her scars, quickly tried to cover herself. What's the problem it's not like you have a big chest to show off. Don't look. Misaki dismissed this action, Dolly was just like her, a flat surface. However, she quickly realized she was wrong. Dolly wasn't concerned about her chest but about the scars covering her back, chest, and a large part of her body. Being able to live with these scars. Oh, well, this saves me some explanation. For the woman, these scars meant nothing. She put both hands on her hips, not seeing Dolly as a human being but as an object. Therefore, she didn't hesitate to explain to Misaki. Chapter 433 the story of a blue boy. This girl is suffering from an unknown illness, and her only chance of survival is to be connected to these devices. 
Dolly's body was quite fragile and frail, evident at first glance. Misaki, upon learning this, was unsure of what to think. Witnessing the girl's suffering and her desperate struggle for life, Misaki couldn't help but feel sympathy. Why is my body like this you find me repulsive, don't you? Hours later, both Misaki and Dolly found themselves alone in the room. Dolly hugged her legs and lowered her head. Due to these scars, she had lost a friend, leading to a significant complex about her body. She also knew there was no other choice, it was either this or death. No, it's not that bad. Don't lie. I know how repulsive I am. Despite Misaki expressing her sincere opinion, Dolly didn't believe her, creating tension between them. Misaki was unsure how to uplift this girl, trying might have the opposite effect, and besides. What does she have to do with me? They barely knew each other, and Misaki wasn't skilled at consoling strangers. She ee -ee. Just as Misaki was about to leave, something strange happened, a wormhole opened in the middle of the room. Hmm. This caused both Misaki and Dolly to jump in panic and step back. The mysterious and terrifying hole made them instinctively want to run. Ah! My apologies for leaving you in charge of activating the twelfth bullet. Fortunately, a voice came from the other side of the wormhole, halting Dolly and Misaki in their tracks simultaneously, they witnessed something incredible, a man with a clown mask emerged from the hole. Dash dash. It's not my fault. I didn't think you had to choose the coordinates of the place. Of course, you have to choose, otherwise, we'd appear randomly anywhere in the world. Sighing, Yuki knew it was a bad idea. When traveling with the twelfth bullet, coordinates, date, time, and direction needed marking. All this was necessary for time travel to be safe, otherwise, the wormhole would open randomly, leading to a completely different area or, worse, the wormhole wouldn't connect with the world, leaving them stranded through time. Thinking about this, Yuki felt the urge to smack Eggy on the head. This Azura idiot nearly caused them to go astray. All right. I'm sorry. It was my mistake, it won't happen next time. Pouting, Eggy crossed its arms, turned its head away in annoyance. Yuki stared at it for a moment before shaking his head. This world spirit could be quite foolish at times, and its behavior was unique. Never mind, what's done is done. Let me check the place. Exiting the wormhole, Yuki inspected the area. It was a room filled with girl toys, indicating it belonged to a girl. Oh no. However, when he turned his head forward, Yuki instinctively touched his mask. Two terribly familiar girls were right in front of him. Dash dash. Glup, swallowing nervously, Misaki and Dolly didn't know what to do with this unreal sight. Yuki was also having problems, he was in a room monitored by cameras and under underscore lines nano machines. Fortunately, equipped with the anti-tracker ring, he was invisible to the cameras and motion sensors. Ugh. What a terrible place to appear. Yuki's plan was to materialize in some part of Academy City, infiltrate this research workshop, keep an eye on Dolly in the shadows, and kidnap her when her artificial body couldn't take it anymore. Although her disappearance might cause some changes in the future, they wouldn't be significant since most data had been collected, so it wouldn't affect the existence of the sisters. Unfortunately, his plan was foiled before it even started due to Eggy's error. No, this might be beneficial. Just as he was about to materialize his spark gun and start again, his eyes glowed beneath his mask upon seeing Misaki. Yuki would never forget this girl, Misaki Shokahau tried to control his demon king in another timeline, so her ability was potent. Strong enough to activate even against the power of the breach. And for Yuki, this ability was very enticing. It was possible to control people through Genjutsu. Still, Genjutsu used the victim's energy, altering it and causing hallucinations, having its limitations. It couldn't erase or alter memories like Misaki could. Because of this, Yuki's mind processed rapidly, quickly thinking of something advantageous. Since she's still young, it's possible to bring her to my side. If I can use this girl, future missions will be easier. With this in mind, Yuki applauded himself, and a hat appeared on his head while his main Jikyo Sherry Nan began to spin. Hello, little ladies. Don't be afraid, your friend Joker has come to brighten your day. 
puff. Snapping his fingers, a cloud of smoke filled the room. Simultaneously, a table with sweets, balloons, and a bubble show appeared. Come on, let's have fun. But that wasn't all. The shadow beneath his feet expanded, trapping the two girls who tried to escape from the crazy clown. He was so peculiar and suspicious that both attempted to seek help but failed miserably. At the same time, a microphone appeared in the clown's hand, and a monkey emerged from the darkness, holding a cane with a top hat on its head. Don't be shy, little ladies. Let me tell you a story. Eek. With hats appearing on their heads and unable to move, both Misaki and Dolly panicked. Their faces covered in horror, they didn't know what this diabolical clown wanted to do, but this was the least of their problems. Suddenly, a song echoed in the room, and the clown began to sing. Yo, listen up here's a story. About a little guy. That lives in a blue world. And all day and all night. And everything he sees is just blue. Like him inside and outside his house. With a blue little window. And a blue Corvette. And everything is blue for him. And himself and everybody around, cause he ain't got nobody to listen to. And before both could react, their bodies began to dance, mimicking the movements of the monkey in front of them. The room filled with a light show, rainbow decorations adorning the ceiling, and two huge bubbles enveloping their bodies, causing them to float and dance in the air. Both girls opened their eyes wide, floating and yet unable to control their bodies. They couldn't help but be amazed by the wonders before them, what was happening seemed like a fantasy, and both were starting to wonder if this was a dream. I'm blue. Da ba -d -da -ba -d. But this was only the beginning. Suddenly, the surroundings changed, everything turned blue. The room seemed to have expanded, creating a small blue world. A paper-cut blue boy appeared alongside a blue house, and as the song continued, the blue boy started moving, as if he were living in the song. After all, this was the story of a blue boy. This marked the first encounter shaping the story and destiny of Dolly and Misaki. Also, it was the beginning of Yuki's nightmare. Chapter 434, Living Together Huh. Minutes later, Misaki opened her beautiful starry eyes, feeling quite confused. She tried to look around, the strange clown that emerged from the wormhole had left a strong impression on her. The ability to control her body at will left a bitter taste in her mouth. At the same time, she wanted to know who or what exactly that clown was, to turn the room into a fantasy. However, she found herself in Dolly's room, everything was normal, and there was no trace of the crazy clown. This left Misaki astonished. At first, she thought the clown had escaped, with how loud his singing was, it would be impossible not to discover him. But seeing the state of the room, she was mistaken. Hmm. Suddenly, a strange sound caught her attention. Turning her head, Misaki found Dolly still with her eyes closed, peacefully sleeping beside her. Judging by the expression on her face, she was having a pleasant dream. What is happening? Dash. Hours later, Misaki found herself back at her home, wearing a thoroughly confused expression. After all, the laboratory where she was this afternoon, both the guards and the scientists, found no clown. Even the cameras had no image of him. No one knew about the clown except for Dolly. The scientists concluded that it was due to an anomaly in Misaki's ability and that the clown, or whatever it was, was a mere product of her imagination. The fact that Dolly could see it was because Misaki unconsciously connected her mind to hers. No one saw or heard it, the room was normal, and the cameras captured nothing. Joker didn't exist. This event made Misaki suspicious. The scientists were right, but at the same time, they weren't. Everything felt so real. Dolly thought the same. What they experienced didn't seem like a dream. Despite how extraordinary it seemed, there had to be a logical and scientific explanation. She even considered that it might be the ability of another esper with mental powers, but she was the most powerful mental esper, it shouldn't be possible. Is it just a dream? Rubbing her chin, Misaki pondered deeply. However, what she didn't imagine was that someone would actually respond to her. Who knows, it's possible. Eek. Jumping in horror, Misaki screamed like a bat. This voice almost caused her to have a panic leak. Who? Is it? 
stammering, Misaki trembled, and her gaze scanned the area. Unfortunately, besides her, there was no one in the room. Don't be afraid, I won't harm you. We've met before, I'm your good friend, Joker. This familiar voice didn't stop Misaki's trembling, instead, she swallowed hard, trying to maintain control. You. You. Don't play games with me, come out wherever you're hiding, coward. So you can control me with your ability no, thanks. But I have to warn you that it won't work. Also, at the moment, I'm living inside you. Although these words were partly true and partly false due to the Black Rock Shooter pendant and the existence of Zafkiel, Misaki couldn't control Yuki. As for living inside her that was a lie. Yuki took the opportunity to hide in Misaki's shadow. Misaki doubted a lot, but no matter how much she searched, she found no one. Not to mention there were no voice devices in her room. Everything was so confusing and unsettling. Living inside me are you some kind of imaginary friend or a ghost? I don't know, maybe. Anything is possible in this world. But you don't have to worry, as my existence is like that of an angel. For heaven's sake, I won't worry. An angel please, I'm not so naive to fall for that. There were quite a few anomalies when it came to the mind, the human mind is quite complex, and those with abilities like Misaki's are even more so. Joker could well be a kind of abnormality created by her ability as a defense system or some other anomaly. This would explain why no one has seen Joker besides Dolly, and it would also support the scientist's theory. However, Misaki still doubted. She didn't know if this Joker was telling her the truth or if it was another mental esper. It could also be an astral being, without a physical body and invisible to people, but this possibility is very low, still existing. As for being an angel Misaki didn't even consider it. A being that only exists in books, categorized as someone pure and without blemish. Even though this clown had a strange aura, Misaki could tell at a glance that he wasn't pure. Therefore, she leaned towards something more scientific and explainable by science. Unfortunately, not everything had a scientific explanation. If you are a product of my ability, I should be able to answer this. Because of this, Misaki put it to the test. No matter what, Misaki needed answers. But once again, Joker left her speechless, as no matter what question she asked or if it was some intimate secret, Joker knew it all. Although it made her blush, it confirmed this, Joker was related to her. As for why he existed Misaki didn't know, but for now, she decided to wait and see. After all, she still didn't believe that this clown was part of her ability and suspected it was some strange being. Not to mention that this guy didn't say anything about being part of her and called himself an angel. Tomorrow, you should go see that girl Dolly again. Of course, this Joker living in her was quite irrational at times. But what does she have to do with you? She's very important. Even so, she doesn't interest me. You should go, or else you'll suffer the consequences. Consequences humph, I'm not interested, and I won't see her again. Misaki was quite confused, she didn't know why the sickly girl Dolly was involved, but she wasn't interested. So she cared very little about what this joker wanted from her. So she shook her hair and rejected without hesitation. Unfortunately, she couldn't refuse. Is that so I have no other choice, then? As if expecting this response, Yuki smiled and stretched his hands out of the shadow. Yuck. What is this? Misaki once again panicked, from her shadow emerged two white arms, resembling a scene from a horror movie that sent shivers down her spine. Let's play, Misaki-chan. No, no. Stay away. Misaki tried to run, but this only made Yuki's smile widen even more. After all, he was attached to Misaki's shadow, and no matter how much she ran, the pair of white hands followed closely, creating quite a comical sight. H-A-A-A. Ha. And as expected from someone with very little stamina, Misaki gave up quite easily. Yuki didn't have to do anything, and this girl could barely catch her breath. This resulted in the pair of white hands grabbing her tightly and slowly moving across her stomach. You. What do you want to do no, no. Go ahead, scream all you want. No one will come to save you. Ha ha ha. No. Imitating the laughter of a third-rate villain, 
the white hands moved their fingers in a creepy manner, and a feather materialized, leading to chaos. Unfortunately for Misaki, her screams were unheard, as they all vanished into the darkness. Dash. Minutes later, Misaki found herself panting, sweat running down her body. She was quite exhausted, her mouth opening and closing like a fish. At the same time, her clothes were in disarray. How easy was that you just had to say yes, it didn't have to come to this. With his hands disappearing along with the feather, Yuki spoke from the shadow. Misaki didn't respond, her starry eyes were now glassy. Who would have thought that refusing this clown would result in this a concentrated dose of tickling? Yes, it was nothing dirty. And though it seemed quite silly, it was effective, as the future queen of Tokiwada begged for mercy after a few minutes. Unfortunately, Yuki was not satisfied, so he continued until the girl couldn't take it anymore. What a pair of hands and a feather could do you just had to see this girl in a mess to figure it out. Chapter 435, Beginning of the Queen After catching her breath, Misaki got straight to the point. What do you want me to do? I want you to be her friend. Huh. Blinking her beautiful starry eyes, Misaki was puzzled once again. It's not that she didn't understand what it meant to be someone's friend, but she didn't understand why she should be, especially to Dolly. Why? This girl is nearing the end of her life, she will die very soon. And the response went beyond her expectations. Misaki knew that Dolly was suffering from an unknown illness and needed special treatment, but she didn't think she was nearing the end of her life. After all, in Academy City, which was technologically advanced and outstanding in the field of medicine, she didn't believe Dolly would die. Still, why do you care? Even if this girl was going to die, why would someone like this clown be interested could it be that he's an angel as he claimed or is it something else? You don't have to worry, but if you need an answer, maybe it's because of my angelic nature. I want that girl to be happy before she dies and to have a friend. Misaki didn't respond but narrowed her eyes. Something wasn't right, but she let the matter go and focused on something more important, which was how long this clown would be with her. And how long will you have to stay with me? No matter what, having someone living inside her all the time wasn't good at all. Misaki didn't want to spend her whole life with this clown. When my mission is complete, I'll leave. And when is that? Who knows? It was really quite annoying. Misaki crossed her arms and pouted, but it only made Yuki smile. Also, don't tell those white coats about me, or they might open your brain again and use you as a lab rat. I know. Dash. Several days passed since then, and the clown stayed with her while Misaki visited Dolly every day. And every time she was with Dolly, the Joker would appear to play with her. Misaki didn't know why this was happening and why he only appeared at those times. It was all a mystery, not to mention that when she tried to use her ability on the clown, it didn't work at all. The signals she sent to his brain never returned. The clown was a puzzle, and his aura confused her greatly. She even came to believe that this clown was an angel, as he had said. Another one. Sing again. All right, one more time. This song is called Destiny. I don't believe in destiny. I just do what's best for me. Don't listen to my enemies. They're just full of jealousy. Duh. This legacy. You gone see what's left of me. You gone see success in me. You ain't seen the rest of me. Another thing that confused Misaki was this clown's ability. Every time he sang, he would take them to a world of fantasy. There was no logic, and science didn't seem to exist. His ability was distorting reality, taking them to a world where their strongest desires came true as they listened to the music. It was all so magical that before Misaki knew it, she was spending more time with Dolly than she used to. And of course, the Joker's strange requests didn't stop. Sometimes they made no sense at all, and Misaki could only shrug at them. They played with the scientists and he taught her some tricks to control people, not by using her mental out ability, but by contributing using simple words. Misaki was impressed that a few words could be so effective on a person's psyche, literally, as long as they had some information about the person, manipulating them wasn't difficult. And before they knew it, two weeks had passed together. Although they had initial problems, like when it came to bathing or something similar, 
they managed to coexist with a lot of effort. There's another girl I want you to befriend. Huh. Suddenly one night, Yuki spoke again from the shadows, causing Misaki to raise an eyebrow in doubt. Who? Her name is Hokei's Junko, she's a quite interesting girl. Really? Misaki raised an eyebrow. After two weeks of being together, this clown was making another request. This girl has a pretty good ability, but it's a pity that its side effect is very bad. Junko's ability is called Rampage Dress, an Esper ability that allows her to manipulate the electrical signals in her cells to extract more strength. This allows her to strengthen her sense of smell by increasing the sensitivity of her olfactory cells, or perform superhuman maneuvers by stimulating her muscle cells. However, due to the nature of her ability, it doesn't protect her from any injuries caused by the strain on parts of her body in the process. Rampage Dress apparently can do more than just strengthen the body, it can also regenerate, allowing her to heal her wounds. However, there's a price, as the rapid cell division and healing of injuries put a great strain on her mind and body, which manifests in the form of pain, specifically cluster headaches, and affects the use of her power. According to Raziel, Misaki has the power to heal the side effect of this girl, so her Yuki hoped to put it to the test and see what this girl is capable of. I see, sure, it's a convenient ability. Misaki agreed with Yuki, after all, this ability is quite good. But. Why do you care about her why should I help her? Again, Misaki saw no reason to use her ability. Misaki is also very cautious, and if there are no benefits involved, it's difficult for her to act for the sake of another person, and Yuki understood this since he was the same. It's not for me, it's for you. This girl can help you in the future. Isn't it your dream to become a queen she could easily be your first subordinate? Chu Queen Yu. You. You dare to enter my head without my permission. Misaki was quite embarrassed. Like every girl, she has a dream, and for Misaki, it's to be a queen, adored by all, and surrounded by her followers every day. And of course, Yuki knew this, so he urged her to make her dream come true. After all, it would be quite beneficial for him if in the future, when this girl is in her hands, she has an organization of espers under her command, ready to cause trouble for that guy in the windowless building. So. Will you do it? Fine. I'll do it. You don't have to read my mind again. Pouting, Misaki was quite angry. She has always been the one to read other people's minds, but with this clown, it wasn't the case, which made her quite furious and relieved at the same time. I don't read your mind, it's just that you're too predictable, Yosama. I already told you not to call me that. Misaki's face turned red with embarrassment, but she still kept her cool after a few seconds. And where is this girl? Don't worry, she's in these facilities. Dash. Ugh. In the bathrooms of the clone dolly workshop facilities, a lavender-haired girl of about 13 or 14 years old was vomiting, holding her head in pain. This girl was Hokei's Junko, whose side effect was tormenting her. Junko, who had gone from level 2 to level 4 in two months, was one of the top espers in this laboratory. She was also admired by her peers for her ability and being older than all of them. Due to her ability and her aura as an Ajusama, easily attracting other girls to her, Junko couldn't let these girls see her in such a pitiful and unethical state. You have quite a bad side effect. Suddenly, while she was relieving her pain, a voice was heard, and a man wearing a clown mask was looking at her, causing Junko's heart to panic. However, just as she was about to scream in horror, her body stopped moving, and her voice stopped coming out. No need to get so nervous, Miss Hokase. We won't harm you. On the contrary, we're here to help you. Right, little Misaki. I told you I'd take care of it. You're scaring her. Behind the clown, a girl with blonde hair and starry eyes appeared. Chapter 436, First Subordinate Junko didn't know what to think, out of nowhere, a clown with a hat and a blonde-haired girl appeared in front of her. This was quite strange, not to mention that her body stopped moving, and her voice ceased. Since you insist, I'll leave it to you. Stepping back, Yuki was curious about what Misaki was about to do, but instead of acting, Misaki looked at him with a furrowed brow. What? 
This is a conversation between girls. Could you please leave? Oh, I see. Shrugging, Yuki had no choice but to sink into the shadows, leaving Junko stunned once again. Yuki wanted to eavesdrop, but he decided not to. Everyone has their moments. Let's go. Minutes later, Misaki exited the bathroom while shaking her silky golden hair. Behind her was Junko, who had a gentle smile on her face, and the way she looked at Misaki had changed. What a surprise. What did you do? Yuki, who was watching everything from the shadows, was curious. It was too quick for Junko to have a good impression of Misaki, and from the way she looked at her, it didn't seem like she was being controlled. It's a secret. Smirking mischievously, Misaki winked, while Yuki shrugged again. As time passed, this girl's personality was changing, becoming very similar to his. A troublemaker. Well, I am her teacher after all. Perhaps feeling proud, Yuki puffed his chest a bit. Wow, little Misaki already knows what a secret is. Shut up. Dash. And so the days passed, with Junko's help, Misaki gradually gained more friend subordinates. It wasn't too many but the scientists in charge were starting to suspect. However, this didn't mean anything to Yuki. Those white coats could be eliminated in the blink of an eye, but since he didn't want to alter the timeline, he decided not to kill anyone and to maintain their existence for Misaki and her friends. Shokohao-sama, it's good to see you. Shokohao-sama. Among the friends that Junko introduced to Misaki was someone special. This girl had long, wavy chocolate-colored hair, apparently as fluffy as cotton candy. Her breasts were much larger than Misaki's, that flat-chested girl, and quite similar to Junko, but apparently, she had more beautiful legs than her, longer and slender. This girl's name was Aumitsuri. She was very kind and friendly, welcoming Misaki with open arms into the group. She was also quite polite, and the other girls looked up to her as an older sister, while also admiring Junko, a girl who went from level 2 to level 4 in 2 months. Ao hoped to be like Junko. This girl, like Misaki, is an esper with the ability to control minds. Mental Stinger is the name of her ability. Her ability operates very similarly to Misaki's mental out, but unlike Misaki's ability, which controls the mind by controlling bioelectricity, Mental Stinger does it by manipulating moisture, controlling the distribution of fluids, and secreting chemicals in the target's brain. However, according to Raziel, her ability doesn't work on Electro Masters and someone with a similar power, like Mental Out. As for who would win if these two abilities, Mental Out and Mental Stinger, were to face each other, the odds were favorable to Mental Out. But due to its nature and potential, Mental Stinger would be a tough opponent. But of course, they were, after all, Ao is Misaki's replacement. In the past, Ao and Misaki were found by the tree diagram to both have the potential to reach level 5, possessing abilities with almost identical basic theory and reach, although they would stabilize at level 3 under the standard curriculum, the higher UPS decided to prune one and focus on developing the other. Following the parameter list, they opted to focus on Misaki Shokahao, with Ao Mitsuri being kept as a backup in case of her death. Misaki, currently having the greater potential, was developing her ability, while Ao was on standby. Yuki knew all this through Raziel and it was also one of his objectives to have a mind control power, he knew that Junko and Ao were companions and didn't hesitate to use Misaki to reach her. After all, despite having the Black Rock Shooter's Bell, mind control always had to be cautious, and it was better if he had both, the most powerful mind control espers as his allies. Of course, he was kind enough to tell Misaki a little about this girl, although he kept to himself the part where she was her replacement. No one would like to be told that in case of their death, they already had a replacement. The human mind is complicated, and everyone wants to be important in one way or another. Being treated like lab rats and being replaceable is something that humans couldn't accept. After all, in Academy City, no one is indispensable. Shokohao-sama. This. I was wondering if, Joker-sama. He. Fidgeting with her fingers shyly, Ao gathered her courage and asked. Since Misaki became part of this group, Yuki didn't lag behind and went out to play with these girls. However, to avoid further confusion, 
Yuki was seen as a byproduct of Misaki's ability. After all, Misaki always had to be present, and she also had to use her ability to connect their minds, only then would Yuki appear to play. Because Yuki always took them to a world of fantasy, played with them, sang for them, he quickly became very beloved to these girls. This clown was the epitome of fun, so Misaki was quickly accepted because of him. Yuki was the light for these girls in a laboratory where they were subjected to ability studies and used as test subjects. Yuki was a relief for them and an escape from reality. And this was even more special for Ayu, whose ability wasn't progressing. Of course, Yuki's existence was a secret, none of the girls wanted Misaki to never return just because of a slip of the tongue. Eris sometimes I wonder if it's me they wait for, or that annoying clown. No, no, you're mistaken, Shokahao-sama, please don't misunderstand. We love you too. Pretending to be angry, Misaki huffed coldly, which led the girls to panic and do their best to justify their words. Really between him and me. Who do you choose? This. Uh. Not knowing how to respond, the girls looked at each other, and their young minds processed so quickly that even then, they were unable to come up with an answer. They feared that if they said they chose the clown, it might hurt Misaki's feelings and lead to never being able to see their favorite clown again. They also conflicted because they couldn't lie about their feelings, as they genuinely hoped to play again in that wonderful world of fantasy. Haha. <laughs> I was just kidding Sparkles. Putting a hand to her lips, Misaki tried to contain her laughter, finding the panicked looks of these girls more amusing than she thought. Now she understood why that annoying clown liked to tease the girls. It was very entertaining to joke around with them. Mel. Shokahao-sama, please don't play with us like that. Puffing out their cheeks, the girls crossed their arms, clearly annoyed by this little prank. He teaches her well. Yuki, watching everything from Misaki's shadows, nodded in satisfaction. His little disciple was growing. He he he. Smiling, Misaki didn't delay any longer. She took out the remote control from her purse and pointed it at the girls. Bip. And at the same time she activated her ability, a clown with a top hat emerged from Misaki's shadow. Hello, beauties. Your good friend, Joker, has arrived. Yay. With the girls cheering in joy, the clown was quickly surrounded. Even though they were teenagers now, these girls still had the spirit of children. Yuki smiled beneath his mask and tipped his top hat. He scanned a group of girls and suddenly, the name of a song popped into his mind. Today is special. Let's all sing together. Chapter 437, Hidden Huh. The girls looked at each other in confusion. Joker always sang to them, but singing all together like this was a first. Still, this didn't stop them from getting excited. But. My voice. Isn't good dot and the lyrics. We might not know them. Of course, some of them lacked confidence in their voices, so they found it quite embarrassing. It's very different to listen to singing than to actually sing. However, Yuki just smiled at this. The problem was understandable but also quite easy to solve. What these girls lacked was motivation. That's why he wasn't afraid that these girls would reject him, especially Misaki. You don't have to worry. You'll all know the lyrics. Besides, snapping his fingers, the shadow under their feet expanded, and the boundary between reality and fantasy was opened. The surroundings changed, and now they were in a world of colors, with lots of candy, very similar to Chariot's world of colors. The next song is also dedicated to one of you. Pointing at them, Yuki winked, adding a touch of mystery to his words and continued. If you want to know who it's for, you'll have to sing to find out. Eh. The girls froze for a few seconds before jumping up. There was a strange sparkle in their eyes, and their fists clenched in determination. Wait. What do you mean it's dedicated to someone explain? Approaching, Misaki whispered, glaring at him. This clown always sang but never dedicated anything. This was very rare, and the main problem was. Who is it dedicated to there were six girls, including her, in this room. Furthermore, there was also the content of the song. It wasn't known if it would be something romantic or some other nonsense. Misaki didn't think it would be something embarrassing, 
knowing this clown, but she still couldn't contain her curiosity. Which woman doesn't like having songs dedicated to her especially if they're sung in front of other people? What's the problem the ladies here are very beautiful, and it's possible my heart might start beating for one of them. Who is it? Who knows? If you want to know, you'll have to sing. With her face getting redder, Misaki couldn't hold back and pinched his waist hard and huffed coldly. This feminine gesture almost melted Yuki's heart. He never thought this flat-chested girl could do something like that. Yuki broke out in a cold sweat, endured the pain, and snapped his fingers. Hats appeared over their heads, as did the monkeys and instruments. The song is called. The melody started, the monkeys took care of this, and the lights illuminated the sky of this world of colors. Before Misaki could react, the clown had already disappeared from his position like a ghost and appeared next to Junko. Both shared the microphone, and the lyrics of the song appeared in Junko's mind. She smiled, and they began to sing together. I just want to love you and give you all my warmth, I'll make you forget those pains that hurt you. We must give the feeling and live every moment, I'll make you forget those pains that hurt you. Junko's curls moved with the wind, and so did the world of colors. Rainbow clouds descended, and they both sang about her, at the same time, they began to fly. With love, you can always achieve the best, with love, the dreams you have will come true. If you wish, you can fly, you just have to trust yourself a lot and keep going, you can count on me, I give you all my support. If you wish, you can fly, if you want to reach the sky and touch the stars, for my love. Misaki was speechless. Out of nowhere, these two people started their journey on the cloud, leaving the group stunned. Not to mention the lyrics of the song, an uncomfortable feeling assaulted Misaki's chest, and her expression couldn't help but change. Is it her hokey's junko dot this idiot? But before Misaki's anxiety could become even stronger, Yuki disappeared again, this time appearing next to Ayu. I know the world, loneliness and crying disappointed you, and the truth buried at the bottom of the sea. They decided to deceive you, sell you an impressive world, but in the end, only the strength of love matters. With love, you can dispel all fear, with love, the dreams you have will come true. Sharing the microphone again, Ayu couldn't help it and hugged him, took the microphone from Yuki's hand, and they began to sing, with the lyrics that appeared in her mind. The world began to change, if Junko was the sky, Ayu was the sea. If you wish, you can fly. You just have to trust yourself a lot and keep going, you can count on me, I give you all my support. If you wish, you can fly, if you want to reach the sky and touch the stars, for my love. They traveled through the ocean, with the water surrounding them, hundreds of beautiful fish swam alongside them, the sight was magnificent especially when the stingrays and colorful fish appeared. Ayu's eyes welled up with tears, and she couldn't help but tighten her arms more. This was simply wonderful. Misaki's fists clenched even tighter, and her expression became even more horrible as she looked at these two together. Suddenly, one of the monkeys came out of the crowd and started playing his guitar, and the rest of the girls joined Ayu and Yuki, jumping and riding the stingrays. If you wish, you can fly, you just have to trust yourself a lot and keep going, you can count on me, I give you all my support. If you wish, you can fly, if you want to reach the sky and touch the stars, for my love. Suddenly the world began to change again, this time it was dark, with the sky full of stars. And before Misaki could react, Yuki was next to her, they took the microphone together, looked at each other, and the stars in the sky fell and began to surround them. Yuki's intention was clear. Beautiful stars, just like his starry eyes. Thinking of this, Misaki blushed, after all, it was the first time someone told her she had beautiful eyes. Those eyes she hated for being abnormal were counters for this clown. Thump, thump. Misaki's heart throbbed strongly, and she understood. The song was dedicated to her, her earlier frustration disappeared, and she smiled happily. It was all a misunderstanding on her part. If you wish, you can fly, you just have to trust yourself a lot and keep going, you can count on me, I give you all my support. If you wish, you can fly. If you want to reach the sky and touch the stars, for my love. And at the same time she understood, Misaki could see it, in front of her was a light, it wasn't the stars. But something warmer, her eyes softened, 
and she couldn't help but reach out, trying to grasp that light. What? Is this? Misaki was confused, this was something new to her, and of course, Yuki was also confused. After all, for some strange reason, Misaki looked at her crown. The world protecting crown spun non-stop, and Misaki was getting more and more excited. Yuki opened his mouth in astonishment, thus ending the song. Impossible. After all, Misaki being able to see the light of order only meant one thing. A hero. This girl transcended limits and crossed over to the next level, standing on equal ground with Mikato. However, as Misaki was smiling, so were the other girls. They approached the duo and made a group hug. Eu's eyes welled up with tears, she tiptoed, and gave him a tender kiss on the cheek. After all, for her, this song was specially dedicated to her. With the change of the sea and all that fantasy scenery, Eu didn't doubt that. Kya. At the same time, she rejoiced in her mind and internally shouted with shyness. Likewise, Junko also kissed him on the other cheek. This song was quite beautiful and very touching. She hugged one of his arms and smiled shyly. What a pity. Yuki lamented. After all, he couldn't enjoy the kisses of these two beautiful girls, as he had the clown mask on. Likewise, Misaki couldn't see this, as she kept staring at the warm light in front of her. Otherwise, she might have used her control and erased the memory of these girls. Chapter 438, Wish for a Star Shokuhau-sama, that was fantastic. After finishing the song, the world returned to normal, and Yuki disappeared. This made the girls surround Misaki. Since the clown was just a byproduct of Misaki's mental ability, the girls mistakenly thought that this was due to Misaki's imagination. With a beautiful song followed by a charming melody, each of them liked it. Their Yosama was so impressive that their eyes shone in adoration. Thank you. Being surrounded, Misaki forced herself to smile. This wasn't her doing, of course, but she wasn't sure either. She hadn't confirmed if the clown was part of her, but she hoped it wasn't. Although it was becoming more suspicious, the human mind is unpredictable, and imagination knows no bounds. I envy you. Murmuring softly, Eu couldn't help but look at Misaki, who like her, was also a mental esper and was a bit envious of Misaki, being able to materialize this clown in their minds, an ability straight out of a dream. Maybe. I can. Suddenly an idea appeared in her mind. As an esper with the power to control minds, it was possible to interfere with Misaki's brain and use it to get closer to the Joker. However, Misaki was even stronger than her, so entering her mind was impossible unless Misaki allowed it. But. Would Misaki agree it was hard to say. It's not fair, she has everything. Lowering her head, Eu thought about everything around her. She was in this laboratory because she was told she could improve her ability and become one of the powerful level 5 espers. She had the potential to be one, but some time ago, she found out that Misaki, who was selected just like her, was selected to advance, leaving her behind. At first, Eu didn't care, eventually, she would advance in her ability. But now she didn't know what to think. Misaki's ability was so strong that she could even create an imaginary being like the Joker. Eu didn't know how she did it, but she was envious. However, she couldn't hate her. After all, Misaki was the creator of what Eu considered the most beautiful thing in the world so far. The Joker had a kind aura around him that made it impossible to ignore, it was so gentle that it confused her too much. The Joker was surely the materialization of Misaki's desires, which only meant that Misaki had a pure mind, and Eu was unable to hate this. She even began to see Misaki in a different light, there was a glimmer of adoration in her eyes, as well as gratitude for creating something wonderful. For Eu, these days were the best of her life, but all humans had selfishness in their hearts, no matter how kind Eu was, she was jealous and wanted the clown for herself. She was also a mental esper, so it was possible to keep the clown with her. Thinking about it, Eu smiled and thought about creating a bridge between Misaki's mind and hers. To have the contact she wanted with the Joker, all she had to do was, I hope Shokuhau-sama accepts this humble girl's request. Of course, this was risky and dangerous. She didn't know if this would affect the imaginary friend, the Joker. 
but Ayu was unable to calm her desire. With high expectations, Ayu brought both hands to her chest and looked at Misaki longingly. Hmm, I know that look, and it's not very good. Yuki, from Misaki's shadow, opened an eye and observed Ayu. He didn't have to read Ayu's mind to know what she was thinking. Ayu's gaze, Yuki had seen it before, and it was problematic. Doesn't matter, it's enough if she follows my orders. However, this was also a good thing, as this would ensure that he had the two most powerful mental espers in the city as allies. Because of this, Yuki didn't think too much about it and let everything happen. What do you think? Two days later, Ayu was unable to contain herself and requested a connection with the Joker. At first, Misaki refused. Invade her mind only an idiot would accept it. No one knew if creating a bridge connecting both brains would have consequences, it was too risky, and there were no benefits. Moreover, Misaki didn't want anyone else entering her brain, she already had enough with that invading clown. Adding someone else would be a pain. However, Ayu was more persistent than she thought. She didn't hesitate to kneel and plead, she even went so far as to offer herself as her most loyal servant. This made Misaki re-evaluate Ayu's psychological condition. To go to such lengths for someone she wasn't sure existed or not, a mere product of imagination. Ayu surely saw something more in the Joker than all the other girls. In the end, Misaki said she would think about it and consulted the clown living within her. Seems interesting. Do you think so too? Blinking in confusion, Misaki didn't think this crazy clown would agree. It sounds fun, but it's your decision. Hmm. Putting a hand to her chin, Misaki thought deeply. She had known Ayu for a few weeks, so it wasn't prudent to make this bridge, but she also had to admit she was quite interested. For now. I'll observe. Shrugging, Misaki shook her silky golden hair. By the way, I have a gift for you. A gift. Tilting her head in confusion, the shadow under her feet expanded, and Yuki emerged from it. Yes, a gift. Holding his top hat with elegance, a small yellow box adorned with red ribbons appeared in his hand. Blinking with curiosity, Misaki took the box and upon opening it, her starry eyes lit up. It's beautiful. Inside the box was a pink collar, made of a rather strange material but also very beautiful. The emblem on this collar was a pair of stars, very similar to the pattern of her starry eyes. Allow me, my lady. Without waiting for Misaki to react, Yuki elegantly bent down, took the collar, and walked behind Misaki. He proceeded to move her long honey-colored hair aside and place the collar on her delicate white neck. Misaki trembled slightly but let Yuki put it on her neck. The collar shone beautifully, and its allure matched her eyes. Wish for a star is the name of this collar. Murmuring, Yuki narrowed his eyes. This was the first time he had created an artifact using the apocalypse virus and combining it with world spiritist matrices, this collar was born. Its powers of order were sealed within, a small part of his power, but it would keep Misaki protected, a protective collar. At least, that was on the surface, as it had other functions like espionage, and one of his clones was inside, as insurance. A collar using your beautiful starry eyes as a base, I hope you like it. Wow. Turning her head sharply, Misaki couldn't help but look directly at Yuki. The mask covered his face, but Misaki's eyes seemed to be able to see beyond the mask. Her cheeks flushed, and tears gathered at the corners of her eyes. This was the first time someone had praised her eyes, she was born with these eyes and was often treated like a monster by others. Her childhood, in particular, was abusive and treated very poorly because of these eyes. Misaki even came to hate them. But now, someone had praised them. It felt so wonderful that her feelings got out of control for a few seconds. Thank you. In the end, all she could do was hold the collar in her hands and smile happily as she looked at it. Misaki knew it, from the moment Yuki placed the collar on her neck, Misaki saw that warm light again. The light was a crown that illuminated in the infinite darkness, and now this collar was the light, protecting her from the darkness and guiding her way. You don't have to thank me, this is a collar that, like its name, has the power to grant a wish. Raising a finger, Yuki smiled under his mask. Misaki raised her gaze confused. A wish. Yes, whenever you wish, 
the collar will fulfill your greatest desire. This was hard to believe, as fulfilling a wish like being a god was impossible. What would happen if she wished to be god would the collar fulfill her wish Misaki didn't know, but she clenched her fist and decided to believe. Chapter 439, Rebirth What's it like outside I'd like to see the sea. Looking out the window, Dolly's eyes filled with longing. For as long as she could remember, she had been in this laboratory, unable to see the world. But according to her old friend Maitori, the sea was a magnificent experience, and Dolly believed it too. After all, Maitori used her ability to show her many marine animals. They were so beautiful that Dolly hoped to see the real ones. It's a shame, but there's no coast in Academia City. Being a landlocked city-state, this was to be expected. Misaki could only sigh at this. Plus, access points are very strict. It's not easy to leave Academia City. Being a city with technology 30 years ahead of the rest of the world, security was paramount. To prevent kidnappings of their Esper students by other countries, Academia City prohibited its students from leaving the city. Likewise, getting permission to leave was also very difficult, so very few students ever left the city. Although with my ability, leaving wouldn't be a problem. Bringing a finger to her cheek, Misaki thought. Her mind control ability would make it quite easy for her to leave the city, although she had never tried. It didn't mean she couldn't do it. UMM. Lowering her head, Dolly became depressed. This was the reality, even if she wanted to, she couldn't go outside. Seeing her so down, Misaki winked and continued. But if you get permission, I could take you. Really thank you, Misaki-chan. Hugging Misaki, Dolly smiled with happiness. This was the first time someone offered to take her. She had lost a friend and thought it would be the end, but now she had Misaki. As long as she had her by her side, Dolly would be happy. Mao okay, enough already. Blushing in embarrassment, Misaki looked away. Misaki-chan. What about Joker-san? After playing for a while, Dolly couldn't help but ask. Like Misaki, Joker was also an important person in her life. Although she didn't know exactly what that clown was, Dolly didn't care. Joker was her friend, the one who always made her smile. His presence made her feel very comfortable, and she wanted to hug him. However, Misaki had spent some time with her, and Joker hadn't shown up. This was quite unusual. I don't know. He hasn't spoken to me all day. Misaki also thought it was suspicious. Unfortunately, Misaki had no way to contact him or call him. That clown had appeared out of nowhere and started living with her. However, Misaki didn't think it was anything serious. It's not like Joker was always active, there were days when he didn't show up, so it wasn't much of a concern. What was odd was that he always showed up when Misaki played with Dolly. I see. Lowering her head in sadness, Dolly picked up a bottle of soda. Come on, don't be sad, Dolly. You make me feel like I'm nothing to you. Seeing her so sad, Misaki decided to tease her a bit, which of course Dolly fell for. No, it's not what you think. Waving her hands in panic, Dolly tried to justify herself, but this only brought a smile to Misaki's face. He he he. Mel. Misaki-chan, you're a bully. Puffing out her cheeks, Dolly crossed her arms and huffed, while Misaki tried to contain her laughter. Eh. Suddenly, Dolly's gaze clouded over, her body stopped obeying her, her legs losing strength, causing her to fall to the ground. Dolly. Reacting instantly, Misaki quickly helped her up. However, Dolly's breathing became irregular, and large drops of sweat began to fall from her face. Dolly. What's happening? Panicking, Misaki tried to call for help, but no one responded. Dolly suddenly fainted, and just as Misaki tried to use her ability to find out the cause of this, a voice stopped her. It's useless, Dolly has reached the limit of her life, I told you, didn't I? Yuki, who had been watching everything from the shadows, sighed and said. I knew this day would come, Dolly's death, the first sister. Life. Limit. Misaki's lips trembled, only now remembering why she had become friends with this girl. Dolly was going to die, and for this reason, 
Yuki blackmailed her. No. It can't be. Dolly. She. With tears falling from her beautiful starry eyes, Misaki couldn't accept it. The doctors. I have to call them. They have to save her. Thinking of all those white coats, Misaki's hope returned. But again, Yuki had to crush it. They can't help her. After all, they were the ones who put Dolly in that state. And what do you mean? Opening her eyes in surprise, Misaki stopped. They told you, didn't they Dolly is a prototype? She is a clone. Sighing, Yuki began to tell her the whole truth. Dolly is a clone of Misaka Mikato, a reference point for the clones of the Radio Noise Project, but she is numbered differently because she is not part of it. Dolly's exact purpose was to investigate more durable clones for mass production. The researchers gave her medication to gather more data. Additionally, she was also created as an experiment to build an information exchange network among the clones, the Misaka Network. Dolly was created for this purpose, both her objectives and her lifespan were programmed, so it was impossible for these researchers to help Dolly. And at this moment, Dolly entered the final phase of the experiment. She was no longer needed, the data had already been collected, and very soon they would begin to create clones en masse. Therefore, Dolly's life or death was irrelevant. No. It can't be. Dolly. Gritting her teeth and clenching her fists, Misaki cried. It was too cruel. Dolly never had a life, and her fate was written. To the researchers, Dolly was not human, she was just a tool created to achieve their goals. Now that you know. What will you do? I, I. Unable to control herself, Misaki's body began to tremble. All those days they spent together, playing, sharing smiles. Misaki, she's a clone. No. Don't. Say that. Huh, don't you dare call her that. Dolly is human. She's my friend. Even if she's a clone, for Misaki, Dolly is much more. Dolly is more human than many people are, she is special, her precious friend. Even if she is a tool created for such a cruel purpose. Misaki couldn't bear it. So even if Yuki was the one saying it, she couldn't allow it. Dolly is her first friend, she couldn't bear it. Dolly is her first friend, she couldn't bear to watch her die. A hatred began to form inside her, a hatred for these researchers, a hatred for this workshop, a hatred for the city. However, she couldn't do anything but watch her die in her arms. Suddenly, Dolly's breathing stopped, and Misaki panicked completely. Is she that important to you? Seeing her so sad and defeated, Yuki sighed and continued. Human emotions are too complex to understand, although Dolly is a clone to Misaki, Dolly was special. Yes. Dolly is my best friend, the first one not to despise my power, the only one who accepted me for who I am. I understand. Misaki, would you be willing to protect her even if it means becoming an enemy of the city? Huh, what are you saying? Confused by these words, Misaki wiped her tears and asked. Just answer. However, Yuki didn't explain, he just needed her answer. Misaki remained silent for a few seconds, frowned, and answered without hesitation. Yes, I'm willing. Smiling beneath his mask, these were the words Yuki had been waiting for. He no longer had to hesitate, his goal was fulfilled. Let me fulfill your wish. Emerging from the shadows, Yuki held his top hat and looked directly at Dolly in Misaki's arms. Since you're willing, it's my duty to help you. And what are you doing? And before Misaki could react, Dolly's body began to float, and Yuki's sherry non started spinning. It was a pity, but Dolly's soul was about to disappear, and he needed to go and bring it back before her body died. Limit between life and death. Clap. Applauding, a large amount of chakra began to emanate from Yuki's body. Although Yuki couldn't revive the dead, he could grant more years of life to the living. But for that, Yuki needed the power of the limits. Unlike Zafkiel, where he could increase his years of life with time, Yuki was going to modify Dolly's entire body at a much deeper level. He would remove all the abnormalities that Academia City had put in her body using the Apocalypse Virus, making her stronger and with a longer lifespan. From today onwards, Dolly would be reborn. 
Chapter 440, Return. Likewise, using the power of limits, she would reinforce her soul for this transformation. At this moment, Dolly stood at the edge of the cliff. Everything was so dark down below that Dolly shuddered. However, this was the end, there was nothing more she could do. She knew this day would come. Her life was meaningless, and she was dead inside. Mi Chan. Miss Aki Chan. Joker San, thank you. But thinking of those three people who accompanied her in her short life, Dalki smiled without regret. It was painful to leave them, but at least she was happy with them, even if for a short time. Dolly was able to enjoy it. Take care, I'll go first. Closing her eyes, Dolly prepared to jump, but at that moment, a light illuminated, and a hand held her, making her unable to continue. Eh. This is not over yet. In front of Dolly, a humanoid figure with a hat on his head materialized. Dolly opened her eyes wide upon seeing him. After all, she could recognize him instantly. Joker Sen. Where are you going you still have much to live for, don't give up so easily. But. I, I can't anymore. This is my destiny, it's the end for me. Destiny do you really think so do you think this is over what about Misaki and your other friend, Maitori do you really think she distanced herself from you because she was disgusted by your body did you never think if Maitori still wants to be your friend and if she was really trying to save you. Yuki's words were a great blow to Dolly. It was true that by dying, she was leaving everything behind, not to mention that by doing so, Misaki would be sad, and Maitori, whom she had never seen again, would be left behind. She didn't know why Maitori stopped visiting her. At first, she thought it was because she was disgusted by her scars, but thinking about it, it didn't make sense. Something had happened that made Maitori stop visiting her. I... Dolly began to tremble. She was ready to leave, she had no regrets. But Yuki's words were enough to make her doubt. She could not leave like this anymore. Seeing her so confused, Yuki raised a finger and continued. You hear her, right Misaki, she's calling for you. She wants you to come back. In the same way, Misaki's cries were heard, and Dolly couldn't help but shed tears. I can't. Of course, you can. Even if life is hard, you still have to live it. Yuki knew about Dolly's worries. Even if she returned, she would face another life of torture and imprisonment, unable to enjoy the beauty of the world. However, now it was different, after all. Come back to us, Dolly, because this time you will be surrounded by your friends. Don't worry, she will protect you. With her tears falling faster and faster, Dolly agreed, and Yuki began to pull her back to life. Let's go back, Misaki is waiting for us. Yes. Done. Touching his hat, Yuki brought Dolly back into Misaki's arms. Bringing her back from the brink of life and death was more costly than he thought, but he confirmed something. As long as her soul remains in the material world, I can save them. The breach dojutsu is amazing, being able to enter all possible limits. The only problem with this dojutsu is that it consumes too much chakra and spiritual power. Yuki really envied the demon king, with his massive power, he fears no exhaustion. Her heart. It's beating. With Dolly in her arms, her breathing and pulse returned, making Misaki tremble with joy. At first, she thought it was all over, her first friend had died. But it wasn't so, now she was safe. You did it. You saved her. You did it, Joker. Smiling in happiness, Misaki shed tears again. However, when she turned her head, she opened her eyes in shock. Yuki was holding his hat and was also dispersing into thousands of particles of light. But this was to be expected, staying in this timeline required a lot of chakra. Yuki had stayed for almost a month, exhausting his chakra reserves. At this moment, using the Breach and Apocalyptic World Dojutsu, he exhausted the last of his reserves. He no longer had the strength to continue existing in this timeline, he needed to return to his timeline. But it was okay. Yuki did not regret this. After all. Mission accomplished. Yes, he had fulfilled his purpose, saving Dolly and giving her a future. No, no. It's a lie, right it's not good to joke like this. With her trembling lips, 
Misaki forced herself to smile. However, Yuki's body was disappearing more and more. I have completed my mission, I can no longer stay here. But look on the bright side, you won't have this annoying clown with you anymore. I told you to stop joking. It's not funny. You know I'm not joking, not now. An annoying clown yes, he's very annoying. Misaki cursed her luck many times for having him by her side, trying many times to get rid of him, but after several attempts, she had no choice but to give up. Was Joker a byproduct of her ability or a different entity Misaki stopped caring? This was no longer necessary for her, as long as he was there, it was enough. When did she start to get used to his presence Misaki didn't know, but now that annoying clown wasn't so annoying anymore, he was her friend. Misaki loved this clown as much as Dolly, but unlike Dolly, Misaki would never admit it. Misaki even swore in her heart that even if she were tortured, she would not admit it. But now. Mission accomplished don't give me that bullshit. What is your mission? Why did you suddenly appear answer me? You know that better than anyone. Shaking her head, Yuki became increasingly translucent, his existence smaller. Wait. Seeing this, Misaki fell into despair again. She stepped away from Dolly and ran toward Yuki, trying to take his hand. Unfortunately, upon contact, Yuki's hand broke and dispersed into thousands of particles of light. No, no, don't go, it's about the cookies, right you can have them. I'll buy you lots of cookies. But please don't go. Moving her hands in desperation, Misaki wanted to touch him, but she couldn't for fear that her body would collapse. She also remembered that they had strong arguments about who would eat the leftover cookies. Misaki even threatened to kick him out if he ate them again, now she was offering them. Yuki, on the other hand, sighed. That's why he didn't like goodbyes, he preferred to leave quietly without anyone noticing. Unfortunately, he no longer had the chakra to remain for another day. Looking at Dolly still not waking up, Yuki smiled and looked back at Misaki in front of him. It's enough. Misaki. You don't need me by your side anymore. Remember, you have friends now. The lonely Misaki even has a group of friends, and this was enough to protect Dolly. And upon hearing this, Misaki stopped trembling, and her eyes became glassy. It was true, she was no longer alone. Don't forget your promise, Misaki. Taking the lead, Yuki leaned down and hugged Misaki one last time, who was stunned by this. Wow. How dare you? I won't forgive you. I swear I won't forgive you if you leave. I'm sorry, but I no longer have the strength. One last piece of advice, don't trust this city, these white coats, don't be deceived. Don't let my teachings go to waste. Wow. Creek K. With his body disappearing, Yuki dispersed into thousands of particles, and Misaki cried and screamed. After all, her arms lost support, and the lights were dissipating. Goodbye, Misaki. We'll meet again in the future. And so, Yuki's voice was carried away by the wind, while Misaki cried louder. Misaki could see that warm light that shone in the infinite darkness moving away from her, farther and farther, that even if she ran, Misaki couldn't reach it. Is she okay will the master return? At the same time, as they returned to their timeline, Est couldn't help but ask. Yuki had literally left a girl crying for him, and for some strange reason, Est felt sorry for her. HMP. Even Eggy snorted at this. As always, that Uchiha man hurt the pure hearts of ladies. It's okay, I can't intervene anymore, or I'll change the future drastically, leaving a space-time hole, and mother won't like this. With time being so complex, Yuki could no longer intervene. Otherwise, it is possible that the will of the world would materialize and stop him, resulting in a strong argument between mother and son. 